parents of the Duke seniors who are jointly out to oversee the coin toss to start this football game. Great arch rivalry between Duke and North Carolina. NC State may have discovered a secret to beating Duke last week. That is getting vertical early. Well, a couple of deep balls really turned the game around, helped the Wolfpack rally against Duke. I think NC wants to do what they did last week. The Heels got Mike Thomas to get the ball deep to Marcus Wall. Wall caught three touchdown balls last week. They need to do that again today, and as you said, particularly early. For Duke, their problem has been inside the 30. Last week, eight times against the Wolfpack, and just one touchdown. They have to be more efficient. Well, the more efficient, the more effective they can be depends on how Robert Baldwin runs today. To take a look at that story, third member of our broadcast crew down on the sidelines, Brett McMillan. Steve, a lot of folks are wondering what's happened to Robert Baldwin. He has not topped 100 yards in the last three weeks. But what's happened to him is he run into the three best defenses in the conference. Florida State, Virginia, and NC State are not only the best in the conference, all of them are among the top 18 nationally. But Robert Baldwin is not just a one-dimensional player. He is also a great receiver. He has 33 catches as well for the Duke Blue Devils this year, so North Carolina's going to have to keep a close eye on him. If he rushes for 81 yards today, Robert Baldwin will become the top rusher in Duke history in a single season. We'll be back with a kickoff next. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium. There's not much to choose from record-wise between these two. And the first time, though, what is amazing since 1888 that both teams are in contention for bowl games in the same year. And how about add one more element, another sellout here at Wallace Wade Stadium. This is the fourth consecutive game in which Duke has played a sellout. Two here at home and then the game at NC State last week and at Florida State before that. 36,000 counting standing room here at Wallace Wade Stadium. There's Scott Caparelli, the junior out of Virginia Beach. He'll handle the kickoff duties. North Carolina won the coin toss, but they have deferred their option to the second half. So that means we'll see Duke's offense, first of all. And back deep to receive, there's Adam Geis, the freshman out of Durham. And along with him will be T. John Redmond. A beautiful day weather-wise. There is a pretty good breeze out of the north as we look to the east and get ready for football here in Durham. Caparelli set to kick it away. And we will be underway. The Duke Blue Devils right now at 8-2. and two. North Carolina at 7-3. and three. All implications where they'll go, not if. And here's the kick. Geis three yards deep. Geis gets hit right at the six yard line actually out to the 13 yard line and the tackle made on the play by k mays who's a backup inside linebacker here's spence fisher in the middle of a pretty good season for fisher 59 percent of his passes complete fourth all-time career passing leader in duke history how he begins this game jack will be crucial to how duke's offense will run First and ten on the deep 14 yard line. Corey Thomas is split wide out. That's Loman in motion. Fisher to the air on first down. It is complete to John Jensen. And Jensen is out over the 23 yard line. It's close to a nine yard game. Let's take a look at our Burger King starting lineups for the Duke offense. Well, either Opalenic or David Loman will be that A back. Baldwin, John Jensen, a big game last week. And Farquhar and Kayette will see tight end duty. Corey Thomas, their best deep threat. An offensive line that has stayed healthy and been very productive all year. Jerron Egg has really come on at center. And a great season for Matt Williams, the right tackle. Second down and about a yard for Spence Fisher here. The development of the Duke offense when they started to take away the tight ends, Farquhar and Kayak, the wrinkle was to get the ball to John Jensen, who has tight end height and does a nice job of picking up positive yardage. Second down and one. In motion, Opalenic. Opalenic, and here the pass complete to Robert Baldwin for the first down at the 31-yard line. So Duke moving the ball to its second leading receiver as we take a look at the North Carolina defense. Quick pattern so far to try and keep Marcus Jones and Oscar Sturgis, the defensive ends, off of Spence Fisher. 
veteran linebacking core headed up by a healthy Mike Morton now in the middle. The secondary has been really banged up. Jimmy Hitchcock and Tim Smith are out. It'll be up to some youngsters around the veterans, Thomas and Boyd. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. Baldwin alone set that. Blitz is on for Carolina. Baldwin up through the middle, and he's hit. Nose hard there by Greg Black. Right at the 31-yard line, helping to finish him off is Eddie Mason. Well, the down linemen for North Carolina defensively, I think, are the key to their defense. Sturgis, Parker, Greg Black, number 56, shedding the double-team block and stuffing Baldwin, along with Marcus Jones, who's having an All-American year at defensive end. They are the guys that are going to, one, try and stop Robert Baldwin, and then, two, put the pressure on number 12, Spence Fisher. Second down and nine. Jensen and Thomas split wide out. DiOrio is there in motion as the drag back, and he gets the shovel pass. Not much yardage there. Riddick Parker is there to stop it at the 33-yard line. Like also Oreo. helping out Mike Morton. Excuse me, Steve. I like the defensive execution from Carl Torbush's unit here. Watch as the line rotates, so does the defensive line. Look at number 97, Riddick Parker, stayed right with that play. He shadowed Spence Fisher, saw DiOrio there, and made it a short yardage play. It's third and seven, no score. First possession of the ball game for Duke out of the shotgun at Spence Fisher. Four-man rush, pass over the middle, is gonna be incomplete for Robert Baldwin. Mike Morton there covering on the play with Kerry Mock, and the Duke offense is stopped. The problem Duke has been having offensively when they don't get three, four, or more yards on first down, they tend to have more difficulty just because the offensive outlook, Steve, for much of the year has been the underneath package. They, I think, are going to have to throw the ball deep themselves to loosen up the front seven of Carolina. John Kruger, the sophomore from Hackensack, New Jersey, is there. Octavius Barnes is back deep. There's a flag on the play. Could be roughing as Barnes picks it up. And Barnes goes in reverse to the 28-yard line, but will go back to the line of scrimmage where Omar Brown may have run into John Five Kruger. Yards, running into the kicker. It's only a five-yard penalty, so it changes fourth and seven to fourth and two. Omar Brown, the guy coming through trying to block it, he tried to avoid it, but he was underneath John Kruger, and when Kruger came down, he caught Brown in the chest and went flying. <laughs> it looks like he caught a spike right to the chin. Snap. That's right. Oh, boy. Now, Courtney Mosey signaled the first down, and it's not first down yardage. And that's what Mac Brown wants to know, and Courtney gesturing to Fred Gold. I'm, I'm sure Fred is saying, how could that be only a five-yard markoff and not the 15-yard roughing the kicker penalty? So he'll come over and explain to Fred Goldsmith. There is a running into the kicker penalty that is five yards and a roughing the kicker that's 15. Omar Brown coming in through the middle and made contact with the kicking leg of John Kruger. Those are times when you wish Courtney would turn his microphone on and let us hear the conversation with well, I'm not so Ian sure as if we might want to hear all the conversation <laughs> with Fred at this time. <laughs> Running into the kicker, five yards on the defense. Still be a fourth down. There you go. Well, we told you that a couple of minutes ago, but we just wanted to be sure. It's fourth and two, and John Kruger will kick again. Both coaching staffs, when we talked to them during the course of the week, really said these teams are so evenly matched that, that big mistakes are going to be the difference in a game. Kicking game, and both teams like to convert turnovers, especially Duke, and especially early. Kroger getting set out of punt formation. Carolina setting up a return. Barnes is going to get away from it. And it'll roll dead inside the 20-yard line down to the 18s. Well, profitable kick for John Kruger of 43 yards on the play. That pushes North Carolina back to their 18-yard line where they'll start out first and 10. And Mike Thomas is the man who gets the call. Thomas will start 
Jason Stanisek may play. Stanisek battling off the injuries as you see Stanisek on the sidelines, the senior who's broken the total offensive record in North Carolina, but it is Mike Thomas who's got a strong arm in there to start. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. And off goes to Leon Johnson, and Johnson gets a big hole up over the middle, and he's up over the 25 to the 26-yard line. It's a gain of about eight. Let's take a look at the Tar Heel offense here. Now Curtis Johnson and William Henderson get the start, but I'm sure we'll see Leon Johnson as well. Marcus Wall and Octavius Barnes, the young wide receivers have gotten better. Greg DeLong may be the best blocking tight end in the country. An offensive line hobbled with injuries. That's why the rushing numbers are down a little bit. Second down and about two. Straight ahead, it's Johnson on the carry. Let's take a look at the Duke defense as they unpile. I think one of the keys for the Duke defensive unit, Steve, as the year has gone on, is the guys up front, Stolmeyer, Holsey, Kirkland, and others have really improved. A great linebacking for John Zwanich having an all-conference year. Likewise, the two safeties, Ray Farmer and Zayd abdul Aline, having great seasons for the Blue Devils. No score on third down and one. Carolina's first time to the football. Here's Leon Johnson with a pitch, and he slips just shy of the first down. Let's see what they give him the spot as Zwanich makes sure he goes no further. Going to be close. Going to be very close. He had a wide opening, Jack. Could have made it had he not lost his footing. Well, Brandon Pollock did a good job of coming up and forcing him back inside. And Johnson didn't have the best footing as he tried to cut back. This Wallace Wade field has had its share of problems during the years. There's been talk of them redoing this field for the 95 campaign. They've been rather lucky this year too, Jack, because they haven't had a lot of rain on game days. Of course, we had torrential rains prior to the Clemson game. There's the yardage. He didn't get it. And the punting unit is on. Sometimes the best plays the player makes won't show up, at least in terms of official stats. Brandon Pollock just came up and forced the play back inside. And that ended up being enough to stop the first down. So Mike Thomas stays on to punt, one of the leading punters in the conference, averaging a good 39.4 for a belt. He's had 13 pinned inside the 20. Probably won't get this one in there, but he does have a wind in his back. I said he might. I was just going to say, with that strong breeze, he could well get it inside the 20. And it's just freshened a bit for Adam Geis, who's in punt return formation. He shows 10, but peels back and returns. on the reverse it's a 17 yard return off a 41 yard punt by Mike Thomas Doug Leonard comes up to make the tackle 11 3 left to go here in the first quarter of play and it's Duke and Carolina all tied we'll be back after this message from Park West Auto Park well, in a big ball game like this, you certainly want to have a little bit extra. Joe DeForest with the special teams has had a great season. They really had Carolina set up for this reverse. You see Corey Thomas peeled back. It ends up being a 17-yard return, Steve. It quite nearly went the distance. Good effort by the Carolina special teams to keep it to just 17 yards. But just the same, Duke's got great field position at their own 48, first and 10. No score. Spence Fisher first pass to Baldwin starts this series out much like the last. Ultimately, Jack, Duke's success will hinge on what they're able to get out of Robert Baldwin on first down. One of the things that we also want to watch here, no question, Baldwin is the focal point catching and running out of the backfield. This is a very tall defensive line for North Carolina, and Spence Fisher has a habit of getting passes knocked down. Shortest guy, 6'4", 6'6", 6'6", 6'5", 6'4", for North Carolina across that front. Blitz is on. He picks it up and goes to Jensen into North Carolina territory, where he's driven out of the 39-yard line by Omar Brown. It's a 13-yard game. Eddie Mason was blitzing on the play, and this is what Spence Fisher has really developed well at this season. 
picking up the blitz. Credit Jerome Egg number 70 as well with catching a piece of Eddie Mason. That slowed the blitz up long enough for Fisher to spot Jensen and get the first down. At the 38 of North Carolina, actually the 39, the handoff to Baldwin on first. Look good going into the hole. Riddick Parker in on the tackle. Let's head to the sidelines of Brett McMillan. The guys, as you saw in the reverse, Fred Goldsmith is not afraid to try something a little unusual. Things to keep in mind as this game goes along. John Jensen, the flanker, came here as a quarterback. And punter John Kruger, also a former quarterback. So uh, we may see some more flea flickers before this day is over. And, of course, Spence Fisher has had three quick kicks thus far for Duke. So on third down, you're never safe. Second down right now in about eight. Well, the Blue Devils at the 37-yard line of North Carolina. Fisher floods the pattern, has a man, and is Jensen again. Complete at the 23-yard line. Fuzzy Lee on the tackle. The third catch by John Jensen. They are without Jimmy Hitchcock. Their outstanding cornerback, Tim Smith, has been out all year. So they are not as strong at cornerback. And when that offensive line gives Fisher the time that he had right there, Spence can deliver to Jensen. Three balls already for John Jensen. That one for 19 yards. Here's Robert Baldwin on first down, and he stretches it out close to the 20-yard line. In on the tackle, Mike Morton also... In on the tackle, Rick Terry, the sophomore from Lexington, North Carolina. Here's the, the big time now for Duke. They are inside the Carolina 30. They were inside the NC State 40 nine times last week, eight times inside the 30, but just one offensive touchdown. Fred Goldsmith is greatly concerned about that. We may see some gadget play here to try and get over that obstacle. Second down, about six. Pursued and tackled by Eric Thomas inside the 10 and the 8-yard line. A 15-yard gain for Duke on the play. Sets him up first and goal. Jensen caught eight balls last week. Four here in the first quarter already. He went one way and then broke back against the green. You see Farquhar, number 82, drove the linebacker up the field when Jensen cut underneath. It's just a lot of space that the cornerbacks have to cover before the safeties, in that case, Eric Thomas can step up to make the tackle. First and goal at the eight yard line. Ball to the lone setback. That's Opalenic in motion. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field, but it's Baldwin on the call. And he's hit by Terry Mock as he gets to the five yard line. So Baldwin picks up close to three. It'll be second down. It appears that Mike Heimerdinger, the offensive coordinator, for the Duke Blue Devils has reversed his role. I mean, they were using Baldwin and that offensive line on the ground very effectively to set up their passing game. Now they're going the opposite way. They feel that Carolina is more vulnerable to the pass. They've been emphasizing that and to great success so far. Second down and goal from the five. Spence Fisher six for eight at about 58 yards. Throwing again. Has a man in almost intercepted by Sean Boyd. He was going for Corey Thomas, and Boyd, the junior from Gastonia, North Carolina, nearly had himself an intercept. Marcus Jones, the All-American candidate at defensive end, matched up with Matt Williams there. Couldn't get to him quickly enough. Corey Thomas, when you run a slant pattern inside the 10-yard line, you've got to make sure you're in front of at least one of those guys. He not only was behind Boyd, he was also behind the quarterback. Ninth play of the drive, third and goal, no score. Duke threatening. Carolina on a blitz. Fisher gets rid of it. Jackson, touchdown, Duke! Same play again. Five catches in the first half. Three of the five have been moved one way and then dragged back underneath. And Jensen runs a great route. He is 6'4", 210 pounds. That's what I was saying, Steve, a tight end body. Hesitation on the hold, but the kick is good by Tom Cochran. And the Duke Blue Devils 
take a 7-0 lead on John Jensen's second touchdown reception of the year with 7.51 left to go on the first. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Duke drives down the field for the first score. North Carolina deciding to blitz. Watch number 57, Kerry Mock, and number 58, Mike Morton, trying to come on. They don't get to Fisher quickly enough. Now watch from the end zone angle. There goes Mock and Morton, so there's no underneath help. And when Farquhar pins the safety, Eric Thomas, Jensen's wide open on the slant underneath. His fifth pass, four of them in that series, three of them for touchdown or first down. The ball is caught out of bounds by Watson. We have a flag down. He may have had a foot planted out of bounds. At the 28-yard line. Procedure. On the kicking team, kick out of bounds. We'll put it in play on the 35-yard line. So, North Carolina will get it at the 35-yard line as we look at a long march by the Duke Blue Devils. Nine plays, 52 yards. Jensen, five-yard touchdown reception. His second of the year and the 13th touchdown pass for Spence Fisher. They had great field position to start most of their drives last week against NC State. The Blue Devils have to be heartened that they turned it into a touchdown on their second possession of the game. Started that drive at the 47-yard line of their own. This is North Carolina of their own. 35. Tom is running the option, and David Hawkins said, uh-uh. Carlos Bagley to help. And it's a loss on the play. Also give a lot of credit to number 94, James Kirkland, the defensive end. What a great upfield move by Kirkland, the junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. It really backs Thomas up. Watch the left side of your screen. Kirkland is, well, I take it back. It wasn't Kirkland. It was David Hawkins who got so far up the field. That really changed the play. Second down. About 16. Back to throw Thomas into the sun. Floats one out there intended for Octavius Barnes. Brandon Pollock on the coverage. I said at the outset, I think the Duke defensive line has really made great progress as the year comes on. Look at the pressure. Number 98, Mike Stallmeyer coming on, and number 90, Bernard Holsey, putting the hit on Mike Thomas. He couldn't follow through on that ball, and it sailed out of bounds. Holsey, a junior out of Rome, Georgia. Third down and 16. Carolina trailing Duke, 7-0. Thomas throws over the middle to the freshman gets into Duke territory at the 48-yard line. John Swanich on the tackle. 23-yard game. Octavius Barnes runs a good crossing route. You've got to be willing to run this route against Duke if you're going to be successful. Underneath Farmer and Abdul Aleem and beyond the linebackers. Good job by Mike Thomas to hang in there against pretty good pressure. His third down conversion. Here comes Carolina was the scout team quarterback. He can throw the football as he guaranteed it right there. Great call by Daryl Moody. Great play fake by Thomas and Johnson. Marcus Wall wide open. Octavius Barnes, the biggest ball he ever has thrown in a Carolina uniform because this time it mattered. Four touchdowns in two weeks for Marcus Wall. Trip Pignetti out of Charlotte, North Carolina, in for the kick out of the hold of Jay Boaz to tie this one up. There's a flag on the play. The kick is good. A flag thrown into the middle of the line. So we'll hold it here to see what the determination is. A personal foul on the blue team, sparing the center. Wow, that's a 15-yard walk-off. Carolina will kick off from the 45. They may try some gadget play on the kickoff. They'll have uh, some yardage down deep. Let's take a look at the touchdown play again. Watch the play fake here by Curtis Johnson and Mike Thomas. It really fooled the Duke defense. Barnes could have set his feet. He had that much time, but he was concerned about getting rid of the ball kind of threw it on the run. 
Marcus Wall had gotten behind Brandon Pollock in. What a big play. Talked about him going deep and running gadgets, and we have seen it from both sides already. First Union presents around the ACC a big Saturday of traditional rivalries. Virginia at Virginia Tech. Hokies lead that in-state rivalry, and both teams are ranked. Wake Forest at Georgia Tech. Of course, both teams looking for their first conference win. Maryland out of conference at Syracuse. And tonight, a big game. NC State with the last crack at Florida State. Otherwise, they're victim 24. And Terry Harvey, last two weeks, he'll probably be out, though, with a shoulder separation. The key question, will he play? Likely it would be Jeff Bender tonight when the two teams kick off at Carter Finley and Raleigh. The scoring drive, well, just four plays, but two big ones. Of course, the big play on third down to Octavius Barnes, and then Barnes' touchdown strike of 48 yards to Marcus Wall. And it didn't take him long to tie it up. The reason why I want to really credit Daryl Moody on the play call, Steve, not only that you run a gadget play like that but he sensed that Duke would be down a little bit defensively on a third and long they give up a first down play the last guy they would expect to throw a, an option pass would be the receiver who caught the previous play for the first down that's why it was a great sequence of calls by Daryl Moody and the offensive staff of Carolina and they have excellent field position kicking from the 50 after the 15 yard penalty Jack Cox possibility of something less than conventional here the ball is set up in squib kick fashion well he can give one of those pooch kicks and maybe have a guy run down underneath it Duke may be forced a fair catch Scott Caparelli getting set to do the office and he just has at it so forget all of the above and Geis downs it 10 yards deep and the Duke Blue Devils will come out at their own 20 yard line now we have seen our share of late of offenses going back and forth and not to take anything away from good defenses but Duke moves smartly down the field and Carolina answered by coming right back the other way 65 yards let's see what Spence Fisher does and let's see what the Carolina defensive coaches will try and do to cut down John Jensen who's already caught five balls out of the flanker spot both teams are appealing to what they feel are the other team's weaknesses here early not probing at all Going right for them. The pass to the tight end this time on a drag is knocked away by Mike Morton. A senior out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. In their victory against Clemson, Duke ran this little curl round to the tight end all afternoon with Farquhar and Bill Kayat. Good recognition by Mike Morton. And after he did it, he said, why didn't I try and catch that instead of just knocking it down? And then run into the end zone. Second and ten from the 20. Jensen in motion. Fisher looking, wants Baldwin thrown on his shoulder and it allowed Terry Mock to get into it. Another pass broken up by the Carolina secondary. They ran John Jensen straight up the sideline that time, clearing the zone. I think they have to think about finding Jensen or Corey Thomas up that sideline. They flooded underneath, and Kerry Mock broke nicely on the ball to break it up. They had Parkour and Baldwin in the flat and Jensen deep. Now they've got Thomas on this side, matched up with Fuzzy Lee. There's a key stack. Carolina would like to shut Duke to three and out here. Fisher in the grass, throws it away to Baldwin. But heavy pressure coming that time from Rick Terry and Greg Ellis and Riddick Parker. Spence Fisher at 225 pounds was able to hang in there well enough to get rid of the football. Some of the Carolina followers wanted a grounding call, but it definitely was in the neighborhood of Robert Baldwin. So John Kruger is on for his second attempt of the day. 43 yards his first kick. Averages about 41 on the season. And his longest kick on the year has been 60 yards. And he kicks it into the wind. Barnes having trouble handling it, and Duke has picked it up. Duke has picked it up, and picking up the loose ball is Lamar Marshall. He's the designated hitman on the special forces for Duke. The Blue Devils wanted a defensive turnover. They thrive on them. They have one. 
They are second in the country in turnover margin. Octavius Barnes looking into the sun, fighting the sun, made the fatal mistake here of trying to pick the ball up instead of just falling on it. Lamar Marshall comes away with the ball, and in a sequence of two plays, Octavius Barnes goes from hero to villain. Look at that turnover margin, plus 18. It has been crucial to the Duke's success. It's a 53-yard punt by Cooper. That turnover margin is second best in the country to Clemson. Opalenic, first and 10, he's in motion. This is Baldwin. Baldwin jumps into a hole and then jumps into a tackle. Tackle made by Mike Morton, who really wrapped up Baldwin hard. They've really shut down Rob Baldwin in that regard. I want to show you one more look at the punt and the problem for Octavius Barnes. Right? He misses it. Now watch him look up to see where the coverage is before he had secured the ball. Right, That, that little peak is what cost him. Once you make that first muff, forget about doing anything. Get the football. Second down and seven. Spence Fisher at the 26 in North Carolina going down the middle for Kyle. catch in the end zone. Mike Heimerdinger said, all right, you're taking it away short on me. Let's see what you do deep. Run the tight end down the middle of the field against the two-deep zone. The mismatch with Mike Morton, the linebacker. And the fully extended grab to put Duke back on top. Bill Kayat with his second touchdown catch of the season. Cochran gets the point after, and Duke Thanks to the turnover, taking the lead on two plays after. Spence Fisher's second touchdown pass of the day. It's Duke 14, North Carolina 7. First quarter, it's been a great game already. Seen a halfback pass, or a flanker pass, if you will. We've seen a fumble on a punt into a tough sun. What do we see next? Here's Marcus Wall at the 15. It was in my mind. <laughs> well, they tried to pooch the ball again to take away Marcus Wall, who was one of the great kick returners in Carolina and ACC history. But once he cleared that initial charge, Matt Brown knew that his junior out of Fayetteville could go the distance. And Marcus Wall scores his second touchdown of the game. 11 seconds elapsed. And we got a tie ball game again if Pignetti makes the extra point. He's on. Jay Bow has to hold. Well, it's Carolina Duke. What more do you want? There's the kick. It is good. We are tied. 5-18 left to go here in the first quarter of play. An electrifying 87-yard return by Marcus Wall, who is really impressing the North Carolina coaches of the way that he has dramatically improved this year. Well, for Marcus, that was his 10th touchdown of the season. Watch him clear the first wall right here with a little hop skip, and then off to the races. Nobody was going to catch him. Wall with his fifth touchdown in the last five quarters. Had three touchdowns last week against Wake Forest. Right here, found the seam. Now watch the little skip to the outside right here. T. John Redmond, who might have had the speed to catch him, tripped and fell, and then that was going to be it because there was no way that Cochran was going to catch Marcus Wall. This has been a series of superlatives, as you see the victory bell there. Back in 1989, the last time that Duke won, well, there were some great things that happened. 
Dave Brown, of course, came up with a great game the last time that Duke won in this series. He would throw for 470 yards. He hits there to Clarkston Hines. It's the most ever against North Carolina, and Duke went on to the widest winning margin that they'd ever enjoyed against the Tar Heels, 41-0. That's the last time the victory bell has resided here in Durham, and the issue is still pretty much in doubt from the start we've received this afternoon. Well, about the only thing this game lacks right now is the manhole cover and the street light that you run your pass patterns <laughs> off of, you know. Go to the manhole cover and hook or do a post pattern off of the street light because we've had everything else and we still have most of this game yet to be played. Well, it's good to see both coaches have gone through most of the playbook now and we can get back to conventional football. Scott Caparelli getting set to kick it away. Here comes Redmond at the four. Redmond almost spun away twice. John Bradley leads the charge against him. Let's go to the sidelines and see what Brett McMillan can dig up. The well, guys, as you talked about the great streak that Marcus Wall is on now, five touchdowns in the last five quarters. With that kickoff return, he also moves up to seventh on the all-eight-time all ACC kickoff return yardage list. Marcus Wall having himself a year and an afternoon so far, a touchdown catch and then a return of a kickoff, 87 yards for a score. Our stat man, Deluxe John Madry, tells us that kickoff return for Carolina against Duke, the first one for a score in 35 years. Of course, with both teams going for bowl bids this year, anything can happen. Here's the pass complete to the tight end, John Farquhar, out over the 30-yard line to the 31. It is a gain of about eight yards on the play. Carl on the tackle, Mike Martin. Excuse me, Steve. Carl Torbush really has a dilemma right here, trying to decide, do I try and blitz him, or do I just lay back and stay in coverage? Spence Fisher right now is just dissecting the underneath coverage of the North Carolina Tar Heels. He has three wide receivers to the short side of the field. That's a busted play for Spence Fisher. He's out there alone with Marcus Jones. And coming over to make sure he stays down is Mike Morton. Spence was real smart taking the elevator to the basement <laughs> as Mike Morton came up towards him. He was able to step around Marcus Jones, but Mike Morton was coming at him head high, and Spence said, let's see what's on sale in the basement. Yeah, household goods, hardware, self-preservation, <laughs> all of the above. Third down, however, game two, third and one. Duke and Carolina tied at 14. Trying to carry it over. He may not have gotten it. Fisher is hit after by Sean Boyd. A flag is thrown in. Sean trying to appeal his case to the officials as Fisher tried to stretch the ball out, but the play was blown dead at that time. The problem for Sean Boyd, he saw Fisher sticking the ball out. Watch the effort by Fisher. He's stopped here. Ball. He's not going to get the first down. Put it back out there. The and Sean Boyd comes up and spears the quarterback. And it turns into a first down for Duke. A costly mistake. Boy, Mac Brown is hot. And probably with good reason. He felt that the play hadn't been blown dead. And Sean Boyd was just reacting by instinct. He saw Spence Fisher put the ball out, try to get the first down yardage, and he reacted. And you saw the reaction of Mac Brown to the play. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. Costly penalty for North Carolina as it keeps Duke in business. Opelunek in motion. Fisher to throw. Complete to Jensen, his sixth catch of the day. Eric Thomas brings him down. The dilemma for North Carolina the injuries in the secondary forced them to be much more basic. You see, they were in straight zone coverage there. They're almost going to have to take somebody and walk him out on the slot receiver in man coverage and take that away. If they can't do that, Duke will keep going that area all afternoon. 18 on that play. First and 10 at the North Carolina, 34. Baldwin. Baldwin gets about and gets up over the 30-yard line. That's what Duke wants to do. Mike Morton in on a tackle. Good blocking by the tackles, John Merrill and Matt Williams. A couple of weeks ago, before the 
Duke Florida State game the Florida State coaches talked about the difference in this Duke team they said they have an attitude now they're a tougher bunch of people than they were before talked to the players yesterday they said they had a great week of practice they're ornery today second and six after the four-yard game play action for Fisher pass complete to Kaya it's at the 23 yard line it's a gain of six it's going to be close to the first down I think he's got it Spence Fisher with good protection from that veteran offensive line. He's taken some licks after he's gotten rid of the ball, but they've given him most of the time plenty of opportunity to wait for somebody to break open. Fred Goldsmith, one of the many candidates, well, the few candidates really for Coach of the Year, a select group along with uh, Terry Bobden of Auburn. And Fred Goldsmith, they, they should inscribe his name on the trophy right now. I don't think there's any question. We have a timeout called by Duke with 2.29 left in the quarter. The there's Fred Goldsmith's record. The best thing I like about that, Coach K down at the bottom. He started <laughs> four and three in the basketball program here at Duke. But Fred with a wonderful year. And he's quick to, to praise the people who were here before. They, this team just needed an opportunity to get it going again. They've been blessed with good health all year. They've had very few injuries. They have made the most of their opportunities. And maybe the best thing that Fred Goldsmith has done, he has reawakened the confidence in the Duke football program. They go out there now not expecting to compete, but expecting to win. Take a look at some scores from around the country on this arch rivalry Saturday, if it were. On the Jefferson Pilot scoreline in the first quarter down at Death Valley. There'll be some blood let down there. Clemson and South Carolina going at it today. Virginia taking the lead on Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech spoiled their finale last year. Of course, for the latest scores and just the games you want, call the Jefferson Pilot scoreline. You see the number on your screen. Calls are a dollar a minute. And kids, get your parent permission. Now the timeout used here because they were a little slow getting out of the huddle and didn't want to have any mistakes to lose the field position. Let's uh, see what Brett's got down on the sidelines. Well, to follow up on what you were saying, Jack, about how healthy Duke has stayed this year, the regulars on defense have not lost a single game to injury this year. And on offense, only tight end John Farquhar has missed one game. One game among all your regulars. That's amazing. First and 10, Spence Fisher was 11 for 17 and two touchdowns in the shot drop. Pass is complete to Farquhar at the 10. And Farquhar is knocked down by Fuzzy Lee at the four-yard line. It's a gain of 19. The tight end delay. What a great play this is. You send everybody deep to clear all the coverage. Farquhar holds, 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 now slips out. And there is nobody near him. The linebackers have dropped into coverage, trying to help out underneath. And there is just wide open spaces for the senior tight end out of Stanford, California. First and goal from the four. Baldwin with the mail, and he is nailed by Mike Morton at about the three-yard line. Morton's been in on a bevy of tackles. Baldwin, of course, from Deland, Florida. So many people think of the one-back offense as just a passing attack. Duke, with the success they've had running the football with Rob Baldwin, have enabled them to use every facet of that one-back offense to success this year. Second and goal. Play action for Fisher. Has time and throws it away. Jensen was close by with Terry Billups and Cuffey. Brings up third down. He was looking for Corey Thomas to his left, and he was well covered. Greg Black initially, or eventually puts the pressure on, but again, Marcus Jones being handled, maybe Carolina people would say literally, by John Farquhar. They kept the tight end in to double-team Jones. Greg Black eventually pushed through and forced Fisher to get rid of the football. Now on the last third down from this spot, they ran Jensen on the slant route. He will be to the left of Fisher as they unfold this play. Thomas to the right on third and goal. Score tied at 14. Fisher looking to Thomas. Overthrow him. Ball sailed. Might have been tipped, too. 
He had both Thomas and Jensen running slant routes. Here's Jensen, put a good move on. He's open. Corey Thomas was doing the same on the top part of the screen, and Spence Fisher couldn't deliver it. So it's Tom Cochran on for the field goal. Cochran missed four last week, but none shorter than 40 yards. The heartbreaker from 51 that could have cleared the hurdle of NC State. This time, he nails it from 22. And the Blue Devils take the lead. 31 points in the first quarter. We still have 96 seconds left to play. But Duke leading it here. 17-14 on Tom Cochran's 13th field goal of the season. We've taken almost an hour to play this first quarter with all that has happened. And we've had a fumble on a kickoff or on a punt. We've had a touchdown on a flanker reverse. We've had a reverse on a return that did not go for a score but did set up a drive that wound up in a score. Well, both coaching staffs talked about mistakes being big keys if not the biggest key to the game and in this ball game right now North Carolina's made two big mistakes they fumbled a punt Duke got a touchdown out of it they had an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that got them the field goal that kept the Duke drive alive and with Jason Stanisek not playing in the ball game yet Carolina finds itself trailing by three and really, they've only had two offensive series because of the touchdown on the kickoff return by Marcus Walls. And they've not really gotten into the rhythm of their offense like Duke has. John Madry pointing out it was just two first downs in the ball game for Carolina, although they do have the 14 points. That's right. One of them on the 87-yard kickoff return by Marcus Walls, who has two touchdowns today. And we're just about set for the kickoff. Cochran lets it fly. It's a short kick. Fielded by Marcus Wall. Wall flattened by Ford at the 32-yard line and a shoestring tackle. And it's a 14-yard return. And so do our North Carolina will bring their offense back out on the field. Actually, Jack, they've only had two series right two first downs two series they've only had seven plays on offense Syracuse jumping out to a two touchdown lead in the second quarter at the carrier dome here's Mike Thomas there's an opening and Thomas knocked out of bounds at the 43 yard line it's a gain of 11 Marshall with the block to lead him Last time on first down, they ran the option to their left and didn't have much success. They ended up losing six yards on the play. This time, David Hawkins doesn't get the penetration. Malcolm Marshall with the good block, and Mike Thomas turns the corner and gets good yardage. Curtis Johnson is the tailback. Marshall the fullback on first and ten, and this is Malcolm Marshall. And Marshall gets his way toward the 47-yard line. David Hawkins in on the tackle. Marshall, the fifth-year senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Daryl Moody and Mac Brown said they didn't know how much they could pound away at that Duke defense this afternoon. They really want to do it a little bit here, if for no other reason than to give their defense a breather. They were on the field for most of the first quarter. Second down and six. Ball at the 48. goes to Curtis Johnson first carry of the day and Johnson is in Duke territory for the first down at the 45 yard line again a seven John Zwanich on the tackle Curtis Johnson will cross the 2,000 yard plateau in his career with better than 60 yards this afternoon the junior out of Greensboro First and 10, North Carolina to Duke 45. We're in the closing seconds of this first quarter. 30 seconds left to play. <laughs> North Carolina checking up. Thomas completes off Tavis Barnes for a first down at the Duke 30. Gain of 15 on the play. On the tackle, Brandon Polo. Oscar Sturgis, defensive end for North Carolina with some injury difficulties right now we'll see if Brett McMillan can find out more about it 
All right now on offense, North Carolina moving with 16 seconds left in the first quarter. First and 10 at the Duke 30, and this is William Henderson. And Henderson, the fifth-year senior out of Chester, Virginia, is flattened by Carlos Bagley. And Bagley makes the tackle after a two-yard gain. That's the end of an exciting first quarter. Tom Cochran's field goal is the difference as Duke leads Carolina by three. Now with Jack Corrigan and Brett McMillan on our sideline as the Duke Blue Devils lead the North Carolina Tar Heels 17-14. Both teams are bowl-bound. The question is where, and today's outcome may go a long way toward determining. Second down and eight, North Carolina now. The Duke, 27. Here's Thomas going out, and now they're going to mark him down as he went down on one knee, trying to pull away from center as we start the second quarter. Let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Steve, Oscar Sturgis has a sprained foot. They have re-wrapped the foot. They're now icing it down as after they wrapped it, he still had some trouble putting some good weight on it. He does plan to return today, though. Good news for the North Carolina defense. As we take a look at the lead first quarter stats, a wrinkle for Duke defensively. They brought LaVance McQueen, the freshman linebacker, with great quickness onto the outside at the top of the screen, number one. Third and 12. Carolina trailing by three. Pass complete to Octavius Barnes for the first down. And more down to the eight-yard line. It's a gain of 23 on the play. Good job by the Carolina offensive line to give Mike Thomas protection and Octavius Barnes on the crossing pattern underneath Brandon Pollock. DeLong cleared the coverage away. They had the blitz package on, and North Carolina answered it. Drive down at seventh play, first and goal inside the 10. They're at the eight-yard line. Barnes split wide to the short side, wall to the wide side. Hand off to the fullback, that's Henderson, and he wriggles his way down to the six-yard line. Well, it looked like the right guard, redshirt freshman Mike Hopgood, might have rolled into that start a little bit without any call, trying to get a little extra help to provide a pathway to get Carolina back into the lead. Well, this is a rebuilt offensive line. We're talking about guys who are third and fourth on the depth chart when the season began because of the injuries. Second and goal, North Carolina. On the option, Thomas. Thomas almost gets there. Puts the ball on the ground. It's going to be two ball. Now he fumbled at the ground, caused the fumble. The ground caused the fumble, and the official and six points to it. You're right. He's going to signal it down to the one. Well, he was hit in the backfield. Mike Thomas is, is 235 pounds. David Hawkins thought he had him in the backfield. Watch him go right through that tackle try. Now watch this. There's the hit. The ball comes down after the contact with the ground. This angle will show it to us a little better. He's hit. Well, actually, the ball did pop free, but I don't think the officials saw it. He just saw it pop free after the ground contact. And Carolina catches a break there. Ninth play of the drive coming in a timeout called by North Carolina to get themselves organized. It's third and goal from the one-yard line. With 13-17 left to go in the first half, North Carolina's knocking on the door. Back here in Durham, Duke 17, North Carolina 14. Double tight end set, extra back. Anybody who can carry a refrigerator in here right now. For North Carolina, third and goal at the one and a half. That's Chris Watson in motion. Thomas, play fake pass, incomplete intended for Greg DeLong. He was covered up by Ray Farmer. Great coverage by Ray Farmer. Didn't bite on the play fake. That's what they were hoping. Mike Thomas had to put it in a spot where nobody else could get to it. See number 22 started to step up and then reacted to it. Great reaction by Ray Farmer. Good picture by our end zone camera to show you. Farmer stepped up but recovered in time to get not only back towards DeLong, Steve, but also to change the, the vision angle of Mike Thomas. This will be an 18-yard chip shot for Trip Pignetti, but it's at a difficult angle into the win. Low snap, kick good, score tied at 17 all. 
So North Carolina drives 10 plays. They'd hope to punch it in from the one to take the lead. They had to settle for a trip to Nieti field goal, his 11th of the season, and they tie it up at 17 apiece. Let's go to the sidelines in Breck McMillan. A couple of things, Steve. Mike Thomas very upset when he came off the field. He felt like there had been interference in the end zone that was not called on that one. And in the meantime, almost the entire time the offense had the ball, which was a pretty good length of time, the defensive linebackers and defensive backs for North Carolina met, used the diagram board, drawing out plans of attack because uh, Duke's been using them pretty good so far. Duke has done, I think, a masterful job of creating the misdirection, getting North Carolina to react initially to the flood of receivers to one side, and then, as Jack has pointed out, they've either dragged the tight end or maybe uh, a slot receiver back in the opposite direction. North Carolina in... 1994 has dominated this period. They're up three to nothing here. They're hoping to slow this Duke attack, which really has not been stopped very much this afternoon. Their first possession, they were stopped, but since then, Spence Fisher has been very good. 12 of 20, a couple of touchdown passes. They've been able to do it without much of a ground game because the personal foul penalty and the fumble punt gave them the good field position. Their ability to capitalize on their opponent's mistakes, that's been their M.O. all year. And of course, the success that Spence Fisher has tasted, however, may make things a little bit easier for Robert Baldwin whenever Duke takes the lead. But Craig, if they Scott Caparella getting set to kick it away. He kicks it very short. This is London with it at the 25-yard line, and he's driven out of bounds at the 28. A tackle made by Omar Brown, the defensive back. And Duke will come out first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Spence Fisher, very efficient today. Two touchdown passes. One to John Jensen, the other to Bill Kayak. And he's looking at first and 10. And both receivers are in the ball game. And so is Oscar Sturgis. Jones after he got out to about the 30-yard line. Gain of about two on the scramble play. Jones, 6'6", six, six, out of Jacksonville, Florida. There you see what he's done so far this season. He has also 13 tackles for loss. 17 for loss. Now, he has been the guy to create pressure on the quarterback. Really pushing him for All-American honors, and I would have to say he deserves a lot of consideration. Greg Ellis is the guy in right now for Sturgis at the other defensive end spot. Second down. And a long eight. Oh, wait a second. Delay of game, apparently. Playcock got down to the zero mark, and Duke didn't get the snap off in time. Dead ball. Delay of the game. Offense. Five yards. Still second down. That's something Duke cannot have happen as you see a, an upset Fred Goldsmith because they were in second and long to begin with second and about nine now it's second and 14 they just aren't as productive when they are in those well most offenses aren't but this is a team that in particular has to be efficient on first down to be successful offensively it's a ball control offense to be sure success on first down is key here's Loman in motion Second and 14, Spence Fisher, incomplete intended for Corey Thomas. At the 41, Marcus Jones puts the heat on Fisher, brings up third down. Yeah, Marcus was right in the face of Spence Fisher. He had Corey Thomas open, but Fisher just couldn't follow through on the ball and, and couldn't get enough on it and short hopped it to his wide receiver. That's what they've done so far on third down. This is easily their longest yardage situation on third down. Let's see if Carolina goes vanilla or if they really try and put a lot of pressure on. Well, they're showing seven men on the line of scrimmage. Score tied at 17. They back up the blitz and go for a twist instead. Here comes Fisher. Pass complete to Kayak. And 
Kayan is in North Carolina territory at the 47-yard line. It's a 29-yard gain for Bill Kayak. I think if Carl Torbush had this to do over again, he would have come with the blitz. When you give Fisher time, he is usually going to deliver. I think Carolina will have to go with the philosophy of constant pressure and hope they don't get burned deep. Kayat with three catches and a score. First and ten, shovel pass, or it's the lateral actually to Robert Baldwin. And Baldwin is pulled down. Mike Morton there along with Brian Simmons and Terry Billups. Now they're trying to do anything to get some space for Rob Baldwin. This time the little quick toss out of the one back set, but Carolina got to the corner and again limited Baldwin to just a couple of yards. Eight carries, 18 yards for Robert Baldwin. We saw similar production in the first half of the Virginia game a couple of weeks ago, and then he came alive in the second. Second down and eight. Fisher out of the shotgun again. Four-man rush for North Carolina. Fisher lets it fly for Corey Thomas. Flag on the play. Possible interference on Fuzzy Lee. Another flag down at the line of scrimmage at the 47. Now you get a flag in the holding area. Holding on the offense. Pass interference on the defense. We'll all set the fouls. Replay second down. I want to see the replay of the pass interference call because I don't know if it was a catchable ball for Corey Thomas. Fuzzy Lee running with him, and I guess they got their feet tangled up here. But I think that was really incidental contact. Yeah, he might have run through him a little bit as Thomas tried to adjust to the ball, but it's a washout on the two penalties, and we'll try it again. Second and eight. Fisher steps up and scrambles up. And wisely gets down. Eddie Mason flattens him at the 38-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down. Gain of about eight, however, on the play. Fisher steps up in the pocket. Wasn't really confident of finding somebody downfield. Thought he could get more positive yardage this way. When he does that slide, he's got to drop the head just a little bit quicker. Third down. Short two. Score tied. Five minutes gone here in the second quarter. Fisher ducks away from one run. And the ball is knocked away by Terry Mock, intended for John Farquhar. Greg Ellis put the heat on. Now, Greg Ellis should have had the sack. He's not happy about that. And then Kerry Mock, he'll get credit for a pass broken up. I don't think he ever saw the ball. The ball just hit him in the body. Ellis here, not able to get Fisher. Now, watch where this ball ends up. Well, you won't see it in this angle. The ball will bounce right off of Kerry Mock. Well, we'll show it to you after the fourth down play. Fourth and one. There it is. Hit him right in the shoulder pad. Duke going for it. the 26 yard line it's a gain of about 12 take it to the 24 Spence Fisher is in rhythm he has been in rhythm since the outset of this ball game and the sequence of play calling by Mike Heimerdinger for most of the afternoon has been outstanding that time they ran Jensen on the slant again but then just folded the tight end to the outside underneath the slant. Not only got the first down, but got big yardage on the play. Two big conversion passes. One on third down to Kayak for 29. That one of 14. Blitz is on. Fisher unloads. It is incomplete intended for Thomas. He caught it out of bounds. Eddie Mason covering. Eddie Mason on the blitz. Well, just what I thought was going to evolve in this game. Carl Torbush, well, particularly now that you're into the scoring zone and you've got more man coverage anyway, I think the Duke defense, or the Carolina defensive coaches, excuse me, have realized that our best chance is to keep putting the pressure on and hope that the Duke offense makes a mistake, take our chances that we don't get burned deep. Second down and 10. 
Ball at the North Carolina 23. Blitz on for the outside linebacker. Pass incomplete for Opelina. Covering on the play, Sean Boy. F Fisher, Spence Fisher screaming about interference, but that ball was well over the head of Opelinic. Tell you what, that offensive line for Duke, a very heady group. They ran a blitz that time from the outside. They were sending Brian Simmons and John Merrill, the left tackle, picked it up, gave Fisher plenty of time. Third down and 10, score tied at 17. Opelinic in motion. Blow it dead as Fisher makes the catch at the 19-yard line. Now it's a dead ball penalty, which would mean either encroachment by the defense with contact or an illegal motion. Full start on the offense, five yards. we play third down. So it was the latter. Well, the only time, uh, whenever a play gets stopped beforehand like that, and it's a procedural call, those are the only two possibilities, either encroachment in which contact has been made, otherwise it's just offsides and the play will run, or the illegal procedure of the, some kind of illegal motion by the offense. Could be a key penalty here. Yes, because it'll back them up if they don't get the first down here. It makes uh, Cochran's job on a possible field goal a little more difficult. It's a moot point now because Jensen has it at the seven-yard line. A gain of 21, Omar Brown on the tackle. John Jensen came to this program as a highly regarded quarterback out of Denver, Colorado. Never really got it going at that position. A couple of years ago, moved to wide receiver. And this season, particularly after the season-ending injury to Joel Nicholson, has just got better and better as the year has gone on. About eight balls last week. He already has seven, and we're in the first half. First and goal. Fisher's pass batted down by Marcus Jones. That is the seventh ball this year that Marcus Jones has batted down. And he has got 20 quarterback hurries on the season. That means a quarterback drops back, sees 71 in his nightmares, and says, oh, my, I'd hurry, too. Second down and goal. Here's Loman. Now out in front of him, Loman, touchdown, Duke. Seven-yard touchdown run, and the Blue Devils are back on top. Like the Carolina defense had strung out the play, but David Loman, the senior out of Bonaire, Georgia, with a nice sharp cut upfield. John Merrill leading the way, but there are three Carolina men here. Merrill takes one, Loman cuts it back inside, and hops through three tackles to score the go-ahead. His fourth touchdown rushing of the season. Cochran's field goal is good, or rather point after is good. And it is 24-17, Duke in the lead. Key conversions by the Duke offense have them up by seven. Three times of that scoring drive, Spence Fisher converted. Twice on third and long, once on fourth and short. Both, all three, passes of 12 yards or more to keep a drive alive for David Loman to score the go-ahead touchdown. 24-17, here comes North Carolina on the return. Marcus Wall brings it out over the 27-yard line. The tackle made by J.D. Lewis, reserve outside linebacker for the Blue Devils, and it is first and 10 for North Carolina at their own 26-yard line. They moved the ball fairly well last time, had to settle for a field goal after a 10-yard mark, 10-play mark. There's the scoring drive, 12 plays, four and a half to do it. Loman the seven-yard TD run, but passes to Kayak, Farquhar and Jensen of 29, 14, and 12 kept the drive alive. And off Curtis Johnson, big hole. Johnson into the secondary, brought down by Ray Farmer and Jamal Ellis. And he's out to the 41-yard line, a gain of 15 on the play. Watch Malcolm Marshall, number 30, right side of your screen, 
bury John Zawanich. Good block as well by Greg DeLong on Carlos Bagley. And Marcus Wall threw a nice block. First and 10 at the 41. Mike Thomas under center. He's been there all the way. Thomas on his own number in the new territory. And Palmer has to make the open space tackle at the 40-yard line. Malcolm Marshall did it again. I mean to tell you, you want to talk about a guy making some big-time licks out of that fullback spot. Watch the top of the screen. Watch number 30. He took care of Carlos Bagley, who is now lying on the ground. You didn't see the end of it, but it was Marshall who took out Bagley that created the alleyway. Alleyway that produced 19 yards for Mike Thomas. First and 10 of the Duke 40. Coming in quickly. Stallmeyer and Kirkland stop Mike Thomas. A great play. Kirkland, a great story. Stripped off about 40 pounds over the summer. Stallmeyer's gotten quicker and smaller as well. Well, that whole defensive unit is a group that has great quickness to the football. That's been the success of the defense created by Fred Goldsmith and Craig Bowl, his coordinator. Four down linemen, two linebackers, and five strong safeties. That's their defense. A lot of them are juniors, so they'll be back. Second down and 13 at the loss of three. Here's the pass. It is complete to Octavius Barnes. Jamal Ellis brings him down to the 24-yard line. A gain of 19 on the play, but a flag down at the tail end. Might have an illegal block at the end of the play by Marcus Wall. They've done the, the job again with that dig pattern to the youngster Barnes. Either that, maybe we got a, a face mask. A well, block in the back, above the waist, on the offensive team, 10 yards from the end of the run. That's what it was. There'll be a second down. When I saw Octavius Barnes clapping, I thought it had gone elsewhere. Billy Granville has not been a real big factor. They've been able to put him into space without getting much done, and Barnes is hit there the penalty was because he went in the back and went below the waist two things you cannot do anymore except in that little box on the line of scrimmage That's right right here watch that block there right there yep. Yep. it brings up second and five Mike Thomas back to throw for it all has wall out there Covered. Brandon Pollock, Jamal Ellis, step for step from Marcus Wall. Well, the Carolina people wanted interference, but I tell you what, Brandon Pollock knocked Jamal Ellis off this football. I think Ellis has a great shot at intercepting this ball. He's got the, the eye on it, but then Pollock coming over got everybody all tangled up, and the ball fell harmlessly incomplete. Brings up third down and five with six and a half to play. North Carolina on third down, two for four. You only have, haven't had that many third down situations at all this afternoon. Kicks return for touchdowns. It's been a great first half. Duke showing blitz. Here comes Thomas on the option. Fumble the football. But it was picked up. Now he pitched it late, Steve. But he was already out of bounds, I think. So Leon Johnson doesn't get credit for the extra yardage. And he's going to be maybe about a foot shy if that. You're right, it looks like a fumble, but I think Mike was trying to wait till the very end to pitch this ball. The problem was Johnson was already out of bounds. We have a flag down on the play on the Duke sideline. On the offense. Wow. Five yards. Loss of down. Their fourth down. Wow. It was ahead of him. He was beyond the line of scrimmage. So that changes it to fourth down. And that means it's decision time for North Carolina. This would be a long field goal into a pretty stiff breeze. I think they'll be forced to go for it now. Yeah, they're at the 36. This is almost, this is too long. Mac Brown really upset about it. He might be saying, and I'm sure from the coaches yelling from upstairs, Ball was already out of bounds. The guy was already out of bounds. Not going to be an illegal pass, but 
you could see in the replay that it clearly was ahead of Mike Thomas. And matter of fact, they're going to put him in punt formation. It's fourth and about six. So no long counts here. He'll try to pooch it. And the kick goes into the end zone over the head of Ray Farmer, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. First and 10, Duke. The Duke defense holds with 6.24 left to go here in the first half. It's the Blue Devils by a touchdown. Warehouses invite you to come by and register for a trip for two to the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl. Airfare accommodations tickets all provided by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. North Carolina with the advantage on first down and yardage. However, they've missed their last three third down conversions. Here's Robert Baldwin for the Duke Blue Devils on first down. And let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Well, we saw Robert Baldwin receive the pass there. You know, we talked in the pregame show about how teams have shut him down as a rush of the last three games. But what that's done is it's forced Duke to look elsewhere for offense. And so far today, we've seen all the places they're finding it. That last pass, Duke. Steve went through two Carolina linemen's arms to get to Baldwin. Resulted in a four-yard gain, second and six, the delay. So Robert Baldwin goes absolutely nowhere. Greg Black, Eddie Mason getting up from the pile along with Marcus Jones. Lots of pressure up the middle. Greg Black with great penetration up the middle. Jones from the outside. Baldwin had barely gotten the handoff on the delay when Black and Jones made the stop. So Duke looking at third down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Third and 10 Carolina's down. defense digging in here. 24 17 Duke. Dominique Fleming to the top side. Opalonic joins him in motion. Whistle and a flag down on the play. It take too long again. Looked like it came from that. Mid ball, delay of the game, offense, five yards. Second delay of game penalty against Duke thus far this afternoon. Brings up third and 15. Interesting trio of receivers that time. Opalemic, Opalenic. Fleming and Wilson three guys who haven't played very much are the receivers right now that's Mark Wilson a sophomore there's Opal Lennon. he's in motion and of course Baldwin in the backfield Fisher steps up fires going for Wilson that time and it is incomplete Marcus Jones puts the pressure on once more Forces the quick throw by Fisher and brings the punting unit off with 5-12 left here in the first half. Well, the decision by Mac Brown to punt on the fourth and five out beyond the 30 turns out to be a good one, provided that they don't mess up on the punt return. They should get pretty good field position. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. They'll peel back and return in anticipation of good field position. Leon Johnson, who scored on a punt return thus far this year, gets some help. Flag thrown into the play as he gets into Duke territory at the 39-yard line. But the flag is back at the 49. 45-yard punt. It's a 20-yard return. But Hawkins on the tackle. An illegal block. We'll take it back to the 39 of Carolina. Block in the back above the waist on the return on the receiving team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Wipes out a good return and, and good field position. Ends up being a 20-yard loss. That's really where he picked up the punt back at the 39-yard line. Take a look at some scores from around the country on this busy Saturday afternoon. Gamecocks with a touchdown early in the second. Virginia, Virginia Tech having a good one. Jason Stanisek is in under center for the North Carolina Tar Heels as they start this drive. Leon Johnson on first and ten, tackled by David Hawkins at the 40-yard line, gain of about a yard. So Stanisek on his first possession of the afternoon. Final regular season game in a Carolina uniform for Jason, who has put his name in a number of spots in the Carolina record book. Total offense surpassing Charlie Choo Choo Justice. 34 starts, 24 and 9. 33 starts, actually. 
Then a setback to pass off play action. Holds him in pursuit. Zwanitz joins in and sacks him at the 30 yard line. John, big play Zwanitz for much of the year, but Bernard Holsey, the nose guard with a good upfield bull rush, started the play and Zwanitz finishes it off with his fifth sack of the season. Here's Holsey, he did a great job on the bull rush getting through Mike Hobgood, the right guard, and then Zawanich on the chase got Stanisek. Third down and about 20. This is not the situation Stanisek preferred to walk into. Blitz is on the pass, is complete to Leon Johnson. Leon gets some room out to the 41, gain of 11, but Mike Thomas will come back to punt. Zaid Abdulalim, speaker of five languages fluently, tackles Leon Johnson. Well, and all of a sudden, after all the offensive firepower, the defensive units for both sides starting to step up here in the closing minutes of the second quarter. Mike Thomas not punting this time around. It's Jay Boaz. So Boaz comes in to kick. I see Thomas standing over on the sideline. Doesn't appear to be getting any medical attention. Adam Geis at the 20. And Geis is flattened by Doug Leonard at the 23-yard line. 39-yard punt and a four-yard return. Let's go to Brent McMillan to find out what's ahead of us at halftime. Well, coming up at halftime, Steve, a lot of different things. The usual features, our play of the week, our player of the week, one for the books, a recap of the 1994 ACC season. We'll also have scores, and I think we got a highlight or two we could run, huh? We've got a few here, Brett. Yep. Yeah, we can find some for you if pressed. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Mike Thomas on the sidelines, watching as the defense takes charge. Here's Spence Fisher handing off to Robert Baldwin on first and ten. Up over the 25-yard line and not much more. Carolina has really shut Duke down on the ground. Greg Black at the point of attack. Rob Baldwin's going to feel a lot of bumps and bruises and aches and pains in that 230-pound body because he has found little free space. He has carried the ball 10 times in the first half for 16 yards. Second down and eight. It's Kayat in motion. Blitz on for North Carolina. Picked up by Duke and Jensen with his eighth reception of the day is still afloat. Out to the 44-yard line, an 18-yard gain. Greg Gallus on the tackle. John Jensen in his final game at Wallace Wade Stadium may threaten some single game receiving marks before the day is over. Here's catch number eight. Slipped a tackler to. He is 210 pounds, so he is not easy to bring down in the open field. Equals his career high from last week in less than a half. Senior out of Denver, Colorado. He's in motion across the formation on first down. Fisher with plenty of time. Throws it into a crowd. But one of those people in the crowd had a blue jersey on it. It was Bill Kaya. Complete to midfield. Kerry Mock and Mike Morton in on the tackle. Duke has two timeouts remaining as the clock is under 90 seconds to play in the first half. Second down and three after the seven-yard gain. Here is Fisher. Pass the first down and is tackled by Kerry Mock at the 43-yard line of North Carolina. That'll stop the clock to reset the chain. Duke trying to add to their one touchdown lead before they head into the locker room. First and ten. Fisher complete to Robert Baldwin. This takes him down to the 37. It's a gain of seven. Clock will continue to move, however, on a minute and three left. Baldwin came up limping a little bit there. You see him hobbling to the sidelines. David Loman will hustle into the game. Second down and four. Fisher, all kinds of time. Pass complete to Kyan at the 20. Mike Morton in pursuit. Drags him down at 
the 16-yard line. It's a 23-yard gain. Stops the clock with 41 seconds left in the half. He didn't get out of bounds, I don't believe. Let's wait and see if they restart the clock. Great protection again. Look at the time Fisher had. He found Bill Kayat. And they are going to say he did roll out of bounds. So that's a break for Duke that the clock was stopped. They didn't have to use a timeout potentially. Duke moving now to 14 of North Carolina. Fisher looks to the top. Lee with a big time hit. Drake Black is the guy who came up with the football. First mistake on the afternoon for Duke. Fuzzy Lee unloads on Kayat in the football. Drake Black hustles his way to the recovery to stop the Duke scoring drive. Had they gone up by two touchdowns, Steve, they really would have changed the Carolina offensive philosophy for the second half. Forced them to be a little bit more wide open than they want to be. Right now, they can just take time off the clock and get in the locker room. Back at the quarterback, Mike Thomas, he hands to Malcolm Marshall, and he fights his way out to the 19, and that apparently is what North Carolina is going to do. Carlos Bagley, the junior from Marietta, Georgia, in on the tackle. The clock will be allowed to roll. The gain on the play is seven. It'll make up second and three. And Carolina will get the ball. They won the toss and deferred at the start of the ball game, so they'll have a chance to gain a tie in their first possession of the second half. Seven seconds to play, last play of the first half. It's Malcolm Marshall. He's got the first down. Billy Granville pulls him down along with Carlos Bagley, but the clock runs out, and the first half is in the books. The Duke Blue Devils lead it here by a score of 24 to 17. David Lohman's touchdown the difference. They've got touchdowns from Bill Kayat and John Jensen, plus a Tom Cochran field goal. Carolina has countered with two Marcus Wall touchdowns, one a 48-yard pass from Octavius Barnes, and the second an electrifying 87-yard kickoff return. Other than that, not much going here at Wallace Wade Stadium as Duke and Carolina go at it. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham. It is a beautiful day for football as Duke leads North Carolina in this traditional day for football as Duke leads North Carolina in this traditional revival of the outstanding rivalry, 24-17. Coach Mac Brown has just returned to the field of battle and our Brett McMillan had an opportunity to get a word with him. Coach, why did you switch quarterbacks late in the first half? Well, Mike Thomas hurt his hip, and they were trying to uh, uh, tape up his hip or wrap it up so we didn't have any choice. Is he going to play in the second half, or who are you going to go with? Well, Jason's ankle's a little bit stiff. He had a little pull in his groin when he came in, so we're probably going to go back with Mike Thomas if he can in the second half. Any adjustments defensively at halftime? Well, hopefully we can get more pressure on their quarterback because we're bringing four and five, and we're just not getting there. They've done a good job protecting, and then we got to keep them from having a big play. We've had them in two third down and 15 situations. You cannot win football games giving up the big play. The other thing we've got to do is force more turnovers like we did right before the half. Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. All right. That's Brett McMillan with Coach Mac Brown, and uh, the quarterback situation will bear watching. We had an opportunity, uh, had a chance to talk with Woody Durham, who is the radio voice of the Tar Heel Network, and he said that Oscar Sturgis was taken into the locker room with a hip problem as well. There's the offensive keys to winning for North Carolina. They need to rush for 200 plus. They are under that total right now with only 73 at this point in time. The biggest one, Steve, I think, is the bottom one. They need to dominate time of possession. And in the first half, Duke had the ball more than seven minutes more than Carolina did. Fred Goldsmith said that to Brett McMillan going off the field at halftime, that he thought he had that Carolina defense tired. And we'll have to see how uh, it shakes out. Mike Thomas, in all likelihood, will start the second half. Jason Stanisek will be ready if necessary. They really need to pound it a little bit, particularly with the wind at their back here in the third quarter. You sense a little disappointment in Mac Brown's voice because Mike Thomas was moving the football very well when he got hurt on the hit. I think he got hurt on that uh, non-fumble near the goal line. Here's Tom Cochran ready to kick it away. And Octavius Barnes. The redshirt freshman from North Carolina getting set. 
receive at the five yard line. <laughs> London leaped over everybody to try to get at the tackle. He did not get it. T. Edwards brought him down at the 20 yard line, and that's going to be where he got a face full of face full of Wallace Wade <laughs> in the effort to try and make the hit on Marcus Wall by Charles London. Man, I'm telling you. Well, it's Christmas time. It's the Chia Pet helmet. <laughs> after the 25-yard line where he's gained four yards. Bernard Holsey, junior from Rome, Georgia, in on the tackle. Carlos Bagley thought he had a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and a nifty cut by Leon Johnson to take a loss into a four-yard gain. Second down. Second and six. Here's the handoff. Leon Johnson hit right at the front of attack. driven out of bounds at the 48-yard line. James Kirkland whacked Leon Johnson, and he got a burner. That's when you get that pinched nerve in your neck and you get that burner, that stinger where the arm goes numb. Right there, the left shoulder leading the way, and somehow Leon Johnson stayed on his feet and took it all the way out to near midfield. And you see Kirkland is down already after the first contact. Great display of balance by Leon Johnson. Johnson, the sophomore out of Morganton, North Carolina, as you look at James Kirkland coming to the sideline. Normally, those disappear and you can go back and play again. He's wearing that collar around his shoulder pads. Tells you he's had a history of that problem. Eight of 23 for Leon Johnson at 123 yards against Wake a week ago. Mike Thomas on the option. Thomas fumbled the football again but got down on it. As he got to midfield to mark him down at that point and a gain of three on the play. Orlando Adwaters in for James Kirkland make the tackle. That is not really the, the real basic triple option because most of the time that fake to the fullback is really just a sort of cursory fake. I mean, Malcolm Marshall was already trying to get to the corner to make a block. Second down, about seven. And off goes to Leon Johnson. Johnson into the second down. Johnson, tackled by John Schwanich. And Zayd Abdul Aleem, but he's down to the 28-yard line. It's a gain of 22 on the play for Leon Johnson. Sometimes out of respect for the opposition, you make some changes away from what you do best. And Daryl Moody and Mac Brown said during the week they didn't know if they could pound away at this Duke defense. They had played so well against the run this year. But I think they made a decision at halftime. Hey, we got to get back to Carolina football, which is feature the tailback. Blocked by Don Meredith and Jurness Gathers. Curtis Johnson now spells the tired Leon Johnson for a four-yard gain to the 25-yard line. Carlos Bagley in on the tackle for Duke. Well, the Johnson and Johnson tandem, not with the numbers they had a year ago, but they had a veteran offensive line last season. I think this Carolina offense has done a nice job this year with all the injuries and inexperience they've had up front. Second down and four. Head off to the fullback, Marshall. Down to the 20. Going to be short of a first down. Ray Farmer comes up to help polish it off. Carlos Bagley at the bottom of that pile. He's had a bunch of tackles along with John Zwanek. Well, pounding away also creates another possibility. You give your defense a rest. They're out there for less plays. I mean, in the first half, Duke had 51 plays from scrimmage. That's an awful lot of time on the field for a defense. Some teams only run 70, 75 plays in a game, Steve. See James Kirkland back in the ball game. That's a good sign. Down on the field, not a good sign, is Billy Granville. As they measure for first down. A head-on collision between Malcolm Marshall and Billy Granville. Let's see it again. Watch 52 and 30. And coming along was Rod Purchison as well. And Billy's up and heading to the sidelines. He'll be back in. Saying to himself, 
Mm, they may have a little bit of a headache tomorrow. This is Durham County, isn't it? Rod Ferguson. Billy Granville from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. North Carolina looking at third down and in inches. They trail 24-17. Malcolm Marshall gets the first down or does he? I don't know. Great penetration by James Kirkland and Mike Stallmeyer. Mike Stallmeyer at the bottom did an excellent job. Junior out of Cincinnati. He did not get it. Your doubts were well found. It's fourth down. It isn't even close enough to measure. He so, lost a, a couple of inches for sure. So North Carolina faced with a decision, one that's going to cause them to call a timeout here. They're down by a touchdown. It's early on in the third quarter. And, of course, North Carolina trying to talk over whether to risk possession of the football in return for a field goal. We'll be back. This telecast is brought to you in part by Hardy's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the ACC. Fourth down and inches. North Carolina just inside the 20-yard line. Trailing 24-17. Full house backfield. That's Watson in motion. Duke with the blitz. Here comes Lee and Curtis Johnson in the clear for the first down, and he's down to the one-yard line. A 19-yard gain by Curtis Johnson, and North Carolina threatens to score again. Zayd Abdul Aleem and Carlos Bagley save the touchdown for the moment. This is good old-fashioned power football and some power running by Curtis Johnson. First and goal from the one. Same lineup with Curtis Johnson as the setback. Curtis Johnson, touchdown, North Carolina. The Tar Heels with a chance to tie on the point after. As Curtis Johnson goes in from a yard out. Byron Thomas turned his man out. Zernes Gethers turned his man in. And Marcus, or Malcolm Marshall, turned Carlos Bagley into a speed bump for Curtis Johnson to go into the end zone. His seventh touchdown of the year. And Trip Pignetti is on for the point after out of the hold of Jay Boaz. The Tar Heels drive the second half kickoff downfield. The kick is up and it is good. North Carolina ties it up at 24 all with 11 16 left to go here in the third quarter. Watch number 30, Malcolm Marshall, the fullback lead through the play as he meets Carlos Bagley and wins the battle. Carlos could only get one arm on Curtis Johnson and there was no way he was going to stop Johnson from finding the end zone. Well, you look at the superlatives in this series down through the years. We take you back to 1990, the game that started the streak of wins for North Carolina. Natro Means had himself a big day. He plays now for San Diego, but on this particular afternoon, he would rush for 256 yards. And the Tar Heels would come out with a 24-22 win over the Duke Blue Devils. Mac Brown got his first Gatorade shower. His team finished 6-4-1 after successive 1-10 seasons to take the victory bell to Chapel Hill. You know what was most impressive about that touchdown drive? 80-yard drive to tie the ball game for North Carolina. And it was Tar Heel football, 80 yards on the ground. Leon Curtis runs of 23 and 21, helps set it up. And then Curtis, a 19-yard run on fourth and inches, got himself to the one, and the next play, he took it in. But you know, Craig Bowl was talking to you during the week, Jack, about the situation that Duke faces if Carolina plays their brand of football. He fears that Duke will be at a disadvantage this afternoon. Well, when it's power football at its best like that drive was, it is much more difficult for that Duke defense. Caffarelli with the kick. Deion Redmond at the one. Redmond reverses ground and is brought down by John Bradley, Kevin Addison Company. Out over the 17-yard line. Let's take a look at the scoring drive as Curtis Johnson got his seventh touchdown of the year. 
took three minutes and 44 seconds off the second half clock. 80 yards in nine plays, and they ran it most of the way. Spence Fisher, 263 yards, throwing the ball in the first half. Over 200 of those yards to two guys, Jensen and Kai, out of with 14 catches between them. Out of the shotgun on first down. Fisher throws, complete, and dropped. By Baldwin, it's an incompleted pass. He didn't have it long enough. Big hit delivered by Eddie Mason as soon as Robert Baldwin got his hand on. Right, here's Kayad as the motion man sliding underneath. He was picked up by Kerry Mock, so Baldwin's the next option, and Eddie Mason with a good pop right as the ball was delivered. Nearly had the ball go over his head. Spence Fisher hung in there, and he got popped by Craig Black as he threw the football. Second and ten. Fisher to throw. Ball is batted. I think Marcus Jones got his hands on him. Marcus Jones got his hand on Spence Fisher's ball over the middle. Brings up third down. Second one of the afternoon for the big defensive end. Got that right hand on it. I don't know if he was going to Baldwin, Short, or Jensen a little farther up the field, but it sets up a third and long, and the Carolina blue-clad fans are hooping it up on the far side. 24-24. We're early on in the third. Third and ten, staring Duke in the face. Robert Baldwin on his way, and he's out over the 25 to the 26. He's going to be shy of the first down. Fuzzy Lee picks up the tackle, but the punting unit will be back on. Duke, the last three series now, will be three downs and out twice, six downs and a fumble inside the five-yard line. Now, that fumble looms very large in this game. Duke could have put themselves up by two touchdowns at halftime. Instead, they've seen momentum swing the other way. See South Carolina and Tennessee having at it. Leading in their prospective ball games. And here's the kick by Cocker. Takes a very good Duke bounce and will roll dead all the way down to the 14-yard line. It is a 60-yard kick by Tom Cochran. Or rather, for John Kruger, rather, it's 58. That's that ties his career high. Of and that's the yard. And that Steve was into the breeze, although the, the wind has really died down from the start of the ball game. That was a great punt. When you see that ball turn over, I mean, get that nose to go up level and then point down, it means you got all of it. So Mike Thomas is back under center, second or first and ten at the 14. Leon Johnson gets the call. Johnson, hard to bring down. Brandon Polak and John Zwanich do the job at the 20-yard line, a gain of five. Ten plays in the second half so far for the Carolina offense. Ten running plays. They have gone back to their style of football and have succeeded in scoring once. Second down and five. Got five yards on first down this time. Here is William Henderson. Fumbles the football, but he gets it back. Came right back up to him, and he's going to be close enough for the first down. On the Duke sideline, they are attending to Rob Baldwin left ankle or foot and actually it looks like they're working on the, the left toe almost like a turf toe problem even though this is a natural surface they go back to their jumbo backfield Carolina with Chris Watson back in there Leon Johnson is the tailback Watson in motion William Henderson the fullback third and inches here's Leon Johnson hit by Ray Farmer but I believe his forward progress is going to be enough for the first down. Farmer did a great job trying to deliver a hit to stop him, but he may not have gotten there in time, and he didn't. Well, all he had to do was get to the 30-yard line, and he didn't get much more than Look at number 22, shadow the play, and make a great tackle. Got both numbers. You teach running backs, don't give the guy both numbers on your jersey. Ray Farmer had both that time. Not before Leon had a first down. North Carolina stays alive in their own 25. Their pass to Leon Johnson again. And the first pass in the second half for Carolina. Hawkins, 
rolls in Bagley bring him down at the 32 yard line but it's a game of seven but really like a run I mean it's a very safe pass and just another way of getting Leon Jensen out on the flank Hawkins was blitzing on the play and so his area is vacated and almost a the screen pass it wasn't the, the conventional one but the line jumped out there and gave him good support second and two and off now goes to Leon Johnson and he pushes ahead to the 35 yard line where he's going to be close for the first down tackled on the play by David Hawkins and Bernard Holzen they have retaped that left big toe they, they titled they titled the injury turf toe because it so often happened on artificial surfaces what it is is it's a it's like jamming or stretching the toe the, the joint that connects the big toe to the ball of your foot is the area that gets damaged and I'm shivering it's painful. Just, I'm shivering just hearing you talk about it. I hate that well, right now, Mac Brown has his team doing just what they want to do. Control the clock, control the football, and maybe put a little sense of panic into the Duke offense when they get the ball back. Second down. The first and ten. Handoff now goes to Curtis Johnson, and Curtis gets up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. So the Tar Heels make first down, and they send Curtis Johnson on the first down play for three. Well, they have the size advantage on that offensive front, does North Carolina. That is not an overly big front seven for the Duke Blue Devils. Bernard Holsey, the only guy above 260 on the defensive front. Carolina averaging about 280 across those front five positions. Blitz is on. The pass complete to Curtis Johnson. Curtis is on his way. Johnson loses the football, but they're going to mark it dead. The ground caused the fumble. North Carolina has it at the 32-yard line of Duke. It's a 30-yard gain. Brandon Pollock will get credit for the tackle. Once again, the good play call, the quick screen against the blitz package. Hawkins and Zawanich, the outside linebackers, both coming on the play. And all Mike Thomas had to do was loop it over the head of Hawkins with blockers in front of him. Curtis Johnson makes it a big play. 30 yards downfield. See Ferguson out there in front leading the way. Here's Curtis Johnson again. Curtis bounces off people, bounced off David Hawkins that time, and Zaid Abdul Aleem brings him down at the 25 yard line. It'll be a gain of close to seven, and it looks like it's going to be close to a first down, but not quite enough. And you look at that Duke defensive unit now, they're starting to put the hands on the knees, they're starting to take the deep breaths. They're, they've been out there for almost 20 plays already in this third quarter. Second down and three. And off Curtis Johnson trying to follow a block. By Mike Hopgood. Bernard Holsey and Brendan Pollock. Pollock, rather, on the tackle. Down to about the 23 yard line. Close to about a two yard gain, very close to a first down. Upcoming the 10th play in the drive and the 19th play in the third quarter. They ran only 28 plays in the first half. In contrast, has only three. Malcolm Marshall on third and short makes the first down. He's marked down at the 17-yard line, a gain of six. And North Carolina now starting to open up huge holes in that Duke interior line. This is what Carolina did in the first half in the game with NC State. They just dominated the line of scrimmage and just not only took over the physical control of the game, the emotional control of the game as well. Duke's defense nearly giving up 200 on the ground today. Here's Thomas. Score tied at 24. Thomas headed for the end zone. Back with the block on the option. 
to get Mike Thomas around the corner. Carolina leading for the first time this afternoon on the 18-yard touch. And watch number 33, William Henderson. Good block on Brandon Pollock. And see you later. Mike Thomas is into the end zone. Our heels up by six. Trying to add one more to it. Trip Pignetti, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, in for the kick after. Jay Boaz to hold. It's up and he's flipping the uprights. The Tar Heels are up by a full touchdown now, 31-24, with 4.50 left to go here in the third period in Durham. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. North Carolina moves out in front, 31-24 on Mike Thomas's run. For the first time this afternoon, the Tar Heels in the lead. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Brett McMillan in Durham, North Carolina. Scott Caparelli getting set to kick for the Tar Heels. And the Duke Blue Devils getting set to take the ball for the first time trailing. Deion Redmond will down it seven yards deep, and Duke will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines. Brett McMillan. Steve, you know how rivalries are. They, they're running so much on emotion and how it twists back and forth during the course of a game. Well, it is certainly switching away from Duke. Late in that North Carolina drive, there's a real feeling of anxiousness here on the Duke sideline as they kind of feel the control of this game starting to slip away. So it'll be interesting to see if the offense can regain some of that with a nice drive for a score. Start from their own 20-yard line. David Lowman is in the backfield. They'll have to do this drive without Robert Baldwin, at least in its early stages. Baldwin with a turf toe problem, as we saw. Fisher shovel pass to Roman, and it's almost thrown into the hands of Bonnie Holiday. It's going to be ruled incomplete. Now they had Matt Fiorio on that little shuffle pass off of the wing. And Bonnie Holiday, as Steve accurately described it, nearly caught the pass himself. Robert Baldwin, bad toe and all in his final game at Wallace Wade is back out there. It's his left foot. He's the lone setback on second down and 10. Now he's got Jensen back there with him. They'll move in motion. And off, Baldwin. Nothing there in the hole. Again, Bonnie Holiday helped stack it up, but Mike Morton cleaned it up. Holiday, the true freshman from Camden, South Carolina, at 6'5", 253. Been a tough finish for Rob Baldwin's career on the ground anyway here as Carolina made the concerted effort to stop him. And, and right now, they have taken control of both lines and scrimmage. Third down. Nine yards to go, 31-24, North Carolina. We've got a timeout call. Timeout call by the Tar Heels to talk things over. May not have had enough men on the field. 4.07 left to go here in the third quarter. It's the Tar Heels leading the Blue Devils by seven. Just a reminder that the annual... ACC football is brought to you in part by Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens precision thinking. 4.07 to play in the third quarter. Third and nine for Duke. They trail North Carolina. 31-24. Spence Fisher out of the shotgun. Blitz is on. Fisher finding some room. Has the first down and more. Eric Thomas making the tackle, but it's a gain on the play of 15 yards for Spence Fisher. It's been a resourceful day for Spence Fisher. He now has over 30 yards on the afternoon scrambling away from difficulty and most importantly here steve gets duke a much needed first down from a confidence point of view for their offense because look at those numbers between the first half and the second half and also to help out that defense give them a little bit of a break and as director david jeff pointed out 17 of them just took place on that play john jensen Gets back in action again with his ninth pass reception of the afternoon out to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight, Mike Morton on the tackle, and Spence Fisher looking to seize momentum here again for the Duke offense. And think what that first down scramble did. All of a sudden, after not being able to find Jensen on the first six plays you run, there he is again like he was in the first half. 
one more time on second and three. Pass is batted down and almost intercepted. It was batted by Mike Morton, and Eddie Mason tried to pick it up. He was looking down the field for Kayat, his tight end. Didn't get it with quite enough air underneath it, and it nearly was a crucial turnover. See, Kayat was open, but the ball not high enough. Sets up the third down and a big play. Play by Morton. Already has 12 tackles this afternoon. Third down and about three. Duke down by a touchdown. Pass complete to Kayat. It was behind him. What a difficult catch. He has the first down in North Carolina territory at the 49-yard line. Hyatt made a circus catch for a touchdown. He makes another good one for a first down. First down, three double. Spence Fisher just looking to get the quick out to get the first down, and Ed Kayat had the ball behind him, but Bill able to make the play. I, first time I've called him by his father all year. <laughs> I'm sure Ed Kayat wouldn't mind that, the Tampa Bay assistant coach. Former Philadelphia Eagles head man. First and ten. Fisher back to throw. Ball is batted. I think that was Marcus Jones again. That's his third of the afternoon. Let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Steve Robert Baldwin's back on the sidelines. They're working on that foot and toe again. Going to put some padding up onto the arch as they retape it and try to get him back out there. Baldwin's already been in for treatment of that once before. Second down and ten coming now for his teammates. A concerned Fred Goldsmith looking on. Carolina showing six men, seven men in the box. Fumble on the snake, and everything breaks apart as Marcus Jones smothers Spence Fisher. It looked like it was going to be that shotgun draw to Loman. I almost wonder if it was supposed to be a direct snap to Loman, because it looked like Spence Fisher wasn't ready to get the football, and Marcus Jones buries him. Watch this again. Fisher did not expect that ball perhaps it was ahead of the snap count you know it's a silent count and i think jerome egg snapped it too soon they did that same play against virginia the direct snap to the tailback instead of the quarterback duke backing up on that play third and 16. final minute and a half the third they're down by a seven fisher avoids the loss and could not get bill kyad who claims he was swarmed over by mike morton and Fisher just now gets himself up off the deck. He took a big time hit from John Bradley, a linebacker who came in on the blitz along with Marcus Jones. John Kruger comes on to punt. Octavius Barnes is back to return it. Kruger the last time hit a 60 yarder against the wind. This one takes a very favorable Duke roll down to the 14-yard line. This would be a 42-yard punt. Now John Kruger's got that bounce roll punt down pat. I mean, if you can get that ball to roll towards the end zone, makes that punting average look a lot better. Well, the winner of our season-long Outback Gator Steakhouse Gator Bowl getaway promotion is Norman Epps from here in Durham, North Carolina. He's won a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. Congratulations to Norman Epps. You're headed to the Gator Bowl. That'll be in Gainesville, actually, this year. Here's Leon Johnson. Heads to the outside. Jamal Ellis pushes him out of bounds at the 16-yard line. It's a gain of only two. The veteran Jamal Ellis, the senior out of Lancaster, Texas, held his ground in run support as the cornerback strung the play out, never allowed Leon Johnson to get turned upfield. Jamal Ellis wasn't even going to come back to school for his senior year. Fred Goldsmith says, come on back. If not to play football, at least to finish at Duke. He did, and he's going to do both. Second down and eight. Mike Thomas pass. Slant in. Goes to Octavius Barnes. And Barnes is brought down by John Zwanich and Billy Granville at the 30-yard line. Mike Thomas has been very effective here in the second half. Most of the time he has gone with the little screen 
to the Johnsons. This time they go back to the play that Corey Holiday made so famous for about four years. That little fold screen with the wide receiver and Octavius Barnes, the redshirt freshman out of Wilson, who picks up another Carolina first down. About 14 yards. As Thomas is three for three in the second half. And here's William Henderson carrying people. John Juanich tries to bring them down, but not before he gets to the 35, 36 yard line. And it is a six yard game as we wind down time in the third. And if you want to play to characterize this third quarter for both teams, that was it. As you saw William Henderson carry the ball and maybe in the first quarter would have gotten a yard or two. Now with the fatigue starting to set in, it ends up being a seven yard game. Second and three. And off goes to Henderson again. Henderson has the first down of the 41 yard line. Billy Granville is there. Eric Scheidt is in on the tackle, along with David Hawkins. North Carolina's third possession here. They have owned the clock in the third quarter. They won't even worry about making a snap in the final seconds. They'll be happy to turn it around in the fourth quarter with that touchdown lead and looking to add that all-important second score. Tough to score two times in the fourth quarter. Well, they've scored twice in the third, and they lead it here 31-24. We've completed three in this great rivalry for the victory bell at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Stay with us. Fourth quarter action coming up. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in college football, the Exxon ACC Game of the Week. This week, it's the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Duke Blue Devils at Wallace Wade Stadium in Duro, North Carolina. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Brett McMillan. Our score, 31-24. North Carolina, Tar Heels have the ball. First and 10 at their own 41. The handoff, or the pitch rather, goes to Leon Johnson. And he can't get outside the tackle of Zaid Abdul Alim, who brings him out of bounds at the 47. It's a gain of six. Our Lee Apparel game summary through three quarters shows the yardage starting to tilt in favor of the Tar Heels just like the scoreboard. Well, the Tar Heels had 189 yards of offense in the third quarter as Duke was able to ground out just 33 yards in the third quarter. So things have certainly shut down for Duke, and Carolina has taken control. Only 59 yards on the ground for Duke through three quarters. Second down coming. Here's Leon Johnson coming through the hole past the 50-yard line. In the Duke territory at the 49, Carlos Bagley and Billy Granville pick him up for the tackle. The problem for Duke right now, they have done such a remarkable job all year of forcing a turnover to turn the game for them. Against this ground attack, they've got to figure out some way to pop the football loose, come up with a fumble recovery, or get a stop here on third and short to get the ball back for their offense. Our heels leading by seven. Ninth play of the drive coming. Started at their own 14. Thomas pitches in the last second to Leon Johnson. On his way down the sideline. And T. Edwards knocks him out of bounds at the 27. A gain on the play of 22 yards. And Thomas waited until the last possible second to let that ball go. Watch this pitch that goes over the head of Brandon Pollock. A gutty pitch by Mike Thomas, and Leon Johnson makes it effective on the 22-yard ramble. Carolina just dominant behind Johnson, Leon, and Curtis, and Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas had a great game here in Durham two years ago. He's doing it again this afternoon. First and good, first and ten. Leon Johnson again over the century mark, as you saw, up to the 22. Five yards on the carry, and Carlos Bagley on the tackle. North Carolina has owned the football here in the second half for all but 10 plays. Their first drive was eight, their second 11, both resulting in touchdowns. This is play 12 coming. Harold Torbus, the defensive coordinator for Mac Brown, is ecstatic with the offensive success. That means his defense can rest. Thomas hands off to William Henderson. And Henderson gets himself inside the 20. Down to the 18, maybe to the 17. Let's see where the mark is. He needed the 17 for the first down. David Hawkins on the tackle. 
Now right now Duke's job is to try and create a turnover so you try and strip the football away. William Henderson coming in David Hawkins yanking yanking but couldn't get it out of the grasp of Mr. Henderson one of the Carolina co-captains. So it'll be third and short. Our Heels trying to add to their one touchdown lead. Here's Leon Johnson with the first down inside the 15. He's down to the 14 yard line. Carlos Bagley with yet another tackle with Brandon Pollock. And they move the chains once more. Byron Thomas, Jernest Gethers, Don Meredith, Mike Hopgood, Raj Ferguson, Greg DeLong, and either Henderson or Marshall at fullback. They have been a blocking wall for Curtis and Leon Johnson. Carved up 72 yards of real estate. They're down at the 14. And off to Malcolm Marshall. He's inside the 10. Down to the nine yard line. Curtis Bunch. John Zwanich get up from the tackle. Little that Fred Goldsmith can do about this right now. I mean, you can try and do different looks on the line of scrimmage, but really right now they are into the thing that Craig Bowl feared. The strict physical matchup, which is an advantage Carolina. Second down is seven. Up over his own blockers and vaults to the seven yard line. Gain on the play of three. Brings up third down and that close to three yards to go. Well, this is the play for that Duke defense right here. They've got to deny Carolina a touchdown. They've got to hope they can make a turnover or force the field goal to keep them within two touchdowns. Third and a long three, maybe even four. Carolina needs the nine. Thomas trying to get him there. Actually, he needs the four. He's down to the five-yard line. He's going to be a yard short. Now, if you're Mac Brown, what's your choice here? You can take the three points and pretty much figure that Trip Pignetti will get it, but they have a solid yard to a yard and a half. You could gamble and try and get the first down and a clinching touchdown, but Max says, no, I want points. It'll put me 10 up and make them have to score twice. It'll do. That's right. It'll do North Carolina no good to own the ball for 15 plays and not come away with anything. Well, if you're still just up by seven, a touchdown and a two-point conversion can take the game away from you. Up by 10, they need two scores to beat you. This will be a 22-yard kick for Kennedy, and it is good. So North Carolina adds to their lead. They're 10 up on Duke here with 10.55 left to play in the fourth quarter at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham. Trip Pignetti with his second field goal of the afternoon puts North Carolina up by 10. That's Joe DeForest, special teams coach and linebacking coach trying to, you heard the one time he said, don't panic, there's still lots of time. He's right, provided that the offense or in the way this game has gone, special teams can come up with something big here to get Duke emotionally back into the game as well as draw closer on the scoreboard. Well, the special teams will have to try to provide Spence Fisher with some field position this time around. He hasn't had much of it in the two possessions that Duke has had, the 10 plays that they have run, they started from the 18 and from their own 20. In the second half, Duke has had the ball for four minutes and 25 seconds. Carolina, 14 minutes and 40 seconds. As Jack pointed out, the Tar Heels were seven minutes behind in time of possession at halftime. They've made that up and added three more of their own. Scott Caparelli getting set for the kickoff. Redmond is under this one at the 16. Redmond pushes ahead. There's a flag on the play. The 29-yard line is where he winds up. They'll mark the flag at the 30. And Kay Mays is in on the tackle. Another illegal block will take away some field position, put it back around the 20. Block in the back above the waist. On the return. 10-yard penalty. First down. Right there, the block on Omar Brown by number 32, Lamar Marshall, put him back on the 19-yard line. Duke had great field position for a lot of their drives in the first half, not here in the second half. 
All three have started in about the same position of the field. Jensen in motion for Spence Fisher on first and ten. This is Robert Baldwin running with some resolve. Runs into Kerry Mock and also Mike Morton, who's had himself quite an afternoon. He's at last count he was at 12 tackles, and I think that was two defense, one defensive series ago. Jerome Egg hobbling a little bit as he came out of the pile. One of the factors in the difficulty for Duke right now, they've not been able to involve Corey Thomas in this football game, their big play threat on the outside. we have thrown to him once. Spence Fisher on second and seven. Throws just at the nick of time, intended for Farquhar. He was covered on the play by Kerry Mock and Eddie Mason. Well, I tell you what, and again, Although Fisher was focusing in that way, Corey Thomas running a clearing route to Fisher's left was beyond the Carolina secondary. Watch, Cor watch Corey Thomas here running against Terry Billups. Billups steps up. There's no safety there. Right now, Corey Thomas is running free, but the play was designed to go underneath. Been pretty lonely all afternoon. Third down and seven. Throws complete to Jensen, but it's shy of the first down for only three yards to the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Eddie Mason. He's had a strong afternoon. Well, they have lived all year with the great underneath passing package, but right now that starts to become a detriment to you. You have to start looking upfield a little more. Here's Jensen again, just a little spin-out route. It's only a five-yard pattern. They quickly line up. They've got the punter out there in punt for me in, in, as a wide out. And now a timeout call by North Carolina just as the play clock got down to 11. Duke came out in an unusual situation. They sent Kruger out on the field, but then put him out as a wide out, a split end. Immediately sent Spence Fisher under center to try to trick North Carolina. They were fourth down and four. And North Carolina wisely called timeout, their final timeout of this game with nine and a half to play. It's Tar Heels up by 10. North Carolina by 10, 34-24, with nine and a half left to play in our Exxon ACC game of the week. John Kruger back in front formation now. Looking at fourth down and about four yards to go with his own 25-yard line. The kick, he's had several good ones today. One of 60 yards, fair catch called for at the 30-yard line by Octavius Barnes, a 45-yard kick. I think his lowest has been 40 yards this afternoon. The timeout's remaining. North Carolina may lead on the scoreboard, but if Duke comes roaring back and North Carolina needs timeouts, they'll have none to draw from from here on out. Well, this, I really think, is the series of the, of the game right now for Duke if they're going to mount a comeback. This has to be a three-and-out sequence or a turnover forcing one. They can't let Carolina grind any more time off the clock. Second half first downs, 11-2 in favor of North Carolina. It is Leon Johnson with a carry once again over the 30-yard line to the 32. Now, Carolina might think about making some kind of play action fake and go deep to Marcus Wall or Octavius Barnes. They've not done much of that today. Lots of time remaining, as you can see, just about nine minutes to play. Mike Thomas has had a strong football game. That's a big place in the first half. He's put his back to do the work in the second. Leon Johnson gets up to the 40-yard line, and he's got another North Carolina first down. Carlos Bagley in on the tackle. Good block by William Henderson. Watch from the linebacking perspective as Granville and Bagley move themselves over, but they're both taken down on the play, and Johnson just dipped it a little bit to the outside and picked up another first down. The 12th of the second half for Carolina to just two for Duke. North Carolina, the number one rushing offense in the country, and they've proven why here in the second half. And off goes to William Henderson, who's stacked up for the line of scrimmage. Eric Scheich is there with Bernard Holsey and John Zwanich. Both teams are headed to postseason bowls. The question is where the winner of this game or the verdict of this game will shape those trips. Duke felt that with a win this afternoon, the best that they could do would be a Gator Bowl bid as part of the coalition. North Carolina with a win this afternoon. You see under Matt Brown, 
They've had at least a guy at the century mark. They're 27 and 5. Here's the pitch late to Leon Johnson. And a new diagnosis of Jamal Ellis in on the tackle. No game. Excuse me. T. Edwards, the safety in on a safety blitz, was the guy who forced the pitch early. As Edwards came flying up to force the action, the junior out of Decatur, Georgia, sets up a third and long. Watch number seven on the left side of your screen. As Thomas starts on the option, he's got a man in his face, Zawanich and Edwards, and here's a huge play. Big play in the second half for the new defense. They've got Carolina at third and ten. Trailing by ten. Duke on the defense. Thomas with the pass intended for Barnes. And a great play made by Zayd Abdul-Aleem, the senior out of Chicago. Running the curl route to get the first down. Abdul-Aleem read the play, stepped up and broke up the pass to force the Boaz punt. Duke has blocked a few punts this season. One for touchdown about in this general area of the field against Clemson about four weeks ago. Low snap, it is blocked! Picked up by Duke, inside the 20-yard line, the block by Bailey Lutgar. Well, they have done this all year. And how appropriate in their final game of the regular season, the special forces force another mistake. Bailey Lutger, a junior out of Tampa, Florida, watch the right side of your screen, comes flying through, blocks the Boaz punt. Good effort by Carolina to keep it from being advanced. Kevin Addis saved that ball from being advanced even farther. At the North Carolina 21, first and 10, pass complete to Jensen. He's down to the 11 yard line. Gain of close to 10. The 11th catch of the afternoon for John Jensen, four shy of the single game Duke record. They used this play a lot in the first half. Good one-handed grab by Jensen. And now all of a sudden that third timeout may be a factor for North Carolina. Four wide receivers, no backs, five wide receivers. For Spence Fisher on second and one. Fisher aims for the end zone. Touchdown, Corey Thomas! The first ball that Corey Thomas has caught this afternoon. He was in coverage because of that five receiver set. He was being defended by the middle linebacker, Mike Morton. An obvious mismatch that Spence Fisher saw and buried in the arms of Corey Thomas. And all of a sudden, this game is up for grabs again. Tom Cochran for the point after. It is good. And Duke crawls to within a field goal away. They strike quickly. The block punt and then the pass to Corey Thomas. Spence Fisher's third touchdown hookup of the day. Duke has made this one a whole lot more interesting with the fourth block punt of the year. It set up a touchdown three plays later on a 12-yard pass from Spence Fisher to Corey Thomas, his sixth reception for score this season. The kick is down to the end zone by Marcus Wall, and North Carolina will come out first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Well, Steve, the guy who just caught that touchdown pass, Corey Thomas, has known North Carolina's Octavius Barnes for years. They're both in Wilson, North Carolina, went to school together as children, but went to different high schools. Well, over the years, Barnes has always won in football. Thomas has always won in basketball. Last night, Thomas's high school beat Barnes High School for the first time in years. Maybe an omen. Thomas may have brought his team back into this ballgame. First and ten. Ash is out there complete to Leon Johnson. What a play by John Zwanich fighting off the block of Raj Purchison for the tackle. A defensive unit that was taking the standing eight count comes up with a third down stop before blocks the punt, and all of a sudden, they're like George Foreman, reborn again. Big play by John Zawanich. A lot less than 45 years old, but you get the message. Second down and 12. Duke changing up, 
Here comes the pitch around the wall, and James Kirkland would have nothing of it. Kirkland stayed at home and waited for help, throwing wall for a loss. Well, after really dominating the line of scrimmage on the first two play calls of the of this possession, Carolina has gone away from the power game, tried a little razzle-dazzle, and great anticipation. James Kirkland stayed at home. It's third and long, 18 to be exact. A three-point ball game in favor of Carolina, but plenty of time left. Thomas pitches at the last moment. How he found Johnson, I don't know. And Leon Johnson gets out to the 29-yard line, but he's going to be shy of the first down. Well, Mike Thomas and Jason Stanisek have perfected that pitch over the defender. And Leon Johnson nearly got them first down yardage before Zawanich and Bagley dropped them. 440 and counting. Remember, North Carolina does not have any timeouts left. The wind is coming into J. Boaz's face. It will be a factor on this punt and likely will be a factor when Carolina gets the ball back. He kicks a low line drive. This is Adam Geis at the 37-yard line. Change of direction. Geis is on his way and gives Duke excellent field position at the North Carolina 49-yard line. Brian Simmons with the tackle. A 15-yard return of the punt by Jay Boaz. Adam Geis, the true freshman, his dad buddy, the offensive coordinator here a season ago, changed directions. It was a line drive kick. The wind and the fact that the previous punt was blocked made Boaz hit a line drive punt, and it gave Duke the chance to get great field position. Duke first and ten. See Ohio State surprising Michigan in the fourth. Would be the first win over Michigan for John Cooper. Could save his job. Fisher. Three-step drop of the pass to Jensen. Jensen on his way to the 31-yard line of North Carolina. Stops the clock with 4.06 left. Eric Thomas on the tackle. The gain is 18. 12th catch of the afternoon for John Jensen. And again, all of a sudden, the slant pattern is open. And the Wallace Wade Wackos are going nuts down below us. The students here at Duke are going crazy. They are getting within Tom Cochran's field goal range. They're at the 31 now. First and 10. Fisher to Kayak. And Kayak goes down on a knee in the grasp of James Hamilton at the 28-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. Well, they certainly don't want to settle for the field goal. They want that go-ahead touchdown. After struggling down in the scoring zone last week against NC State, Duke has been much more efficient this afternoon. They're looking for the end zone. They've done this without Robert Baldwin available at back at the running back spot. Five wide out, same formation they scored the touchdown on. Four-man rush for Carolina. Pass complete to Jensen inside the 15 down to the 10-yard line. Hamilton and Mock on the tackle. Duke on the move. John Jensen's 13th catch of the afternoon. So many have been just like this. Inside guy clears the linebackers. He drives underneath, catches the ball, turns the shoulders north and south, and starts heading up field. 44 catches on the year. First and 10. Duke is at the 11-yard line. They can get a first down. The clock might not have struck midnight for Cinderella. Here comes the kick. It is good by Tom Cochran. And Duke now leads by four. 38-34. 2.47 left to go as Spence Fisher hooks up for the fourth time today. 
home of the minivan store and America's truck stop. You asked for it, you got it. The big game. North Carolina and Duke have never put this much on the line before. And the Duke Blue Devils fashion a stirring comeback. Thanks to Spence Fisher and John Jensen and Corey Thomas, and they lead this game 38-34. Marcus Wall drilled as he got to the 15-yard line. Let's look at the touchdown, the fourth touchdown pass for Spence Fisher this afternoon. Well, in a fairy tale year, the Cinderella Duke Blue Devils, they haven't been wearing glass slippers. They've been wearing work boots. They have done it in so many different ways. Their ability to come back, remarkable. Corey Thomas, two catches for two touchdowns. But keep in mind, on this field, two years ago, Mike Thomas, the magic man, a touchdown to Bucky Brooks with two minutes to go to rally Carolina to a victory. They'll have to do this without any timeouts. Leon Johnson up the sideline, has some running room, shy of the first down. Brandon Pollock knocks him out of bounds at the 24-yard line. They needed the 25. It'll be second down and one. That stops the clock, however, with 2.31 left to go. North Carolina out of timeouts. They won 31-28 here two years ago when that guy found Bucky Brooks for the winning score. Second down and one. Thomas to throw under pressure, almost picked off by David Hawkins. Mike Stallmeyer with great pressure on Mike Thomas. And Mike threw it right at David Hawkins. Had Hawkins been aware the ball was coming, he might have been able to hang on to it. The home stand shuddered at the prospect of possibly right up the, the killer score. Right now, North Carolina can't use a field goal. They've got to score a touchdown. They're four back. Third down and two. Handoff goes to Leon Johnson. And he gets up over the 29-yard line. He's got the first down. Zayd Abdul-Alim in on the tackle with the ability to stop the clock with first downs momentarily. The automatic grounding to stop the clock in the sidelines. 2.15 is an eternity. Rock rolling. Thomas back to throw. Over the middle. It is complete to Octavius Barnes. First down and more. Sportsmanlike penalty, excessive celebration against North Carolina. Duke, I would guess, would not take it on this extra point try, but might take it on the kickoff for better field position. We'll have to see what the decision is. They're going to assess it. It's just a curl route. Much like what Tyrone Davis did against Duke early in the game for Virginia. Was able to turn the corner. Brandon Pollock could make the play, and then Barnes was off to the races. They are going to take the penalty on the kickoff. North Carolina with the kick after by Tip Pignetti. It is good, and the Tar Heels are three up. 41-38. Davis Barnes threw a touchdown for the first Carolina score of the day. He might have finished off the scoring with the biggest play of his young career. He knew it from this point on. 71-yard pass from Mike Thomas. And the Tar Heels take the lead. 41-38 with 2.01 left to play in the football game. Duke will get it back with a full complement of timeouts. 
And in all likelihood, excellent field position. The penalty, of course, excessive celebration will be marked off here on the kickoff. That means it would almost be like a safety in that they would be kicking off from their own 20-yard line. So Duke will get good field position. Don't go away yet. Mac Brown. And it, it's a it's a proper penalty, I guess, but it's also frustrating for for coaches that you know in an emotional game like this, you know your kids are going to celebrate. And when that goes too far, is a tough decision for officials to make. They felt Carolina's celebrating had gone too far, and as a result, a penalty gives Duke hope with two minutes in a second to play that they can get into at least tying field goal range if not another go-ahead score. Caffarelli getting set to kick. Deep Tion Redmond, Adam Geis. Redmond at the 20. Redmond at the 40. And out to the 43-yard line, first and 10, Duke at the 43. 155 remaining, Duke with three timeouts. So they moved downfield very quickly last time out in three plays. Spence Fisher has had a superlative afternoon, 30 of 51, 349 yards, and four touchdowns. The last two to Corey Thomas. Again, that five-receiver set. Thomas slot man to the short side of the field. Pass is complete to Thomas. Thomas in the North Carolina territory at the 44-yard line. 13-yard gain moves the chain, stops the clock for the reset. Duke will not huddle. Duke using the playground philosophy again. Next score wins. Somehow that's the way this game, in particular between these two, should be played. Fisher to Jensen. Jensen inside the 30. He's down to the 28-yard line. Mind you, a tie goal, a field goal ties it. But as Jack said earlier, Duke will be probing for touchdown. That stops the clock with a minute 35 left. And they really don't want to call a timeout here because they want to keep Carolina guessing. Back to throw again for Wilson. The pass is incomplete. Eddie Mason in coverage. That stops the clock with a minute 25 left. The reception by Jensen is 14. Tom Cochran hopes Duke can get closer to get to a touchdown instead of tying this ball game up. But he says he's ready, and they're getting within his range. And now Duke will take a timeout after running at the rapid pace because they were having the success. They now say... Well, let's re-collect ourselves. Let's decide exactly what we want to do. Because, again, after a great game like this, you don't want to tie. You want to win. Exactly. So Duke has two timeouts remaining. They have the ball at the North Carolina 28-yard line. A kick from here would be of the order of 45 yards. So obviously they want to get closer. Obviously they want to get... They can avoid kicking a field goal and go for the touchdown for the win. They want to do that, obviously. They've had great success in the red zone today. We talked about efficiency for North or for Duke in the red zone this afternoon and inside the 30. All but once have they come up. And that one time may come back to haunt them. That possession near the end of the first half when they were moving Carolina back, got inside the 10, fumbled the ball at the 5, and North Carolina was able to offset Duke's offense and go into the locker room only seven points down. And I would think both teams will look back at that play as a key one, regardless of the outcome. Yes. Mike Heimerdinger, the offensive coordinator, talking to Spence Fisher on the headset. It's second down. You know, and, and, and the only concern you have but it's what you've got to do the only concern about going towards the end zone is you run the risk of turning the ball over but 
Like I said, you're, you're here to win the game, not tie it. Corey Thomas may be the man to watch. He's in the slot on the short side of the field. Fisher looking for him. It is incomplete. Nearly picked off by Eddie Mason. Well, it was a little bit behind Thomas. That's exactly where they were going. And Sean Boyd, the strong safety, broke nicely on the ball. So now it's a third down setup. Fox stopped at a minute and 20. Third and 10. Now Duke not only has to worry about the score, they're going to worry about keeping the football. And they can't get a sack here either. Day. Jensen, who has had an outstanding game. Wow, what timing by Mason. The football and Mason hit Jensen at the same time. It went straight up in the air, and Fuzzy Lee comes down with the intercept. We have a penalty on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offensive team with penalized half the distance to the goal. First down. Now they have two timeouts remaining, too. They will use it after first and second down so that Carolina will not be able to run the remaining timeout. And keep in mind, Duke, one of the top teams in forcing turnovers. They need one here desperately at the 13-yard line. North Carolina, first and 10. Mike Thomas hands off to Leon Johnson. And Johnson gets up over the 16. Duke will use one of its two remaining timeouts. Billy Granville and Zaid Abdul-Alim in on the tackle. That's Corey Thomas. He'd like to have an opportunity to do it again for his Duke Blue Devils. But Duke lived all day on that crossing underneath pattern to their receivers. John Jensen had caught more than a dozen balls today, most of them on that kind of pattern, trying to get his 15th of the afternoon. Carolina finally had a guy underneath, and Eddie Mason with the pop just as the ball got there produced the turnover. Fossidi gets credit for the, for the interception. And now North Carolina has the ball looking at second down. Let's look at the interception to turn this thing around. Watch how closely I mean, that is great timing. That ball and Eddie Mason arrived at the exact same instant. And Fuzzy Lee covers up a big interception back out to the 23. And then, of course, the excessive celebration penalty cuts it half the distance to the end zone. And it's second down and six coming here for North Carolina. Duke with one timeout remaining, a minute and five left to go in the ball game. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this one from Durham. What a way to finish our season. Both of these teams going on to bowls. Here's Mike Thomas with the pitch to Leon Johnson. Johnson gets tripped on the corner by T. Edwards, who was involved in a block with William Henderson. And Duke will exhaust its final timeout with 58 seconds remaining. More than likely, what we may see here, Steve, I shouldn't say more than likely, but one of the possibilities we may see here. Carolina will run a play. They'll probably run wide again, but make sure that you stay in bounds is what Mac Brown will tell the running back. Then if they have to take the delay of game penalty on fourth down, and then even perhaps take the safety, they would be up 41-40. You would give a glimmer of hope to Duke, but you would at least avoid the chance of a block punt for a touchdown or a punt return for a touchdown, force them on the free kick to try and cover more ground than possible. Yes. That would give you a lot more room. There's still plenty of time to do just that. With 58 seconds remaining, there's Eddie Mason who made the big hit on John Jensen. Now let's take a look at our players of the game. Octavius Barnes, he caught one touchdown. He threw another touchdown. He had a great day. 
redshirt freshman out of Wilson, North Carolina. And John Jensen, 14 receptions. That's a record, 174 yards and a score. Third down and six, third and seven. North Carolina up by three, trying to get the first. Thomas strings it out for the corner, doesn't get it. He's at the 15-yard line. It brings up fourth down. Duke cannot stop the clock. Both teams out of timeouts. North Carolina will send the punting unit on, but let's see if the scenario acts out as Jack laid it out moments ago. Well, they can take it down to 16 seconds or, and then take the delay of game penalty. Then the penalty markoff would move it to the 10. You could have your punter run around in the end zone a little bit, then take the safety, leaving less than 10 seconds to play do the free kick and as long as they don't score a touchdown on it probably walk out of here with the victory so they take the delay of the game delay of the game on the kicking train five yards fourth down now let's see if they kick it away 14 seconds left to go good decision it's clock management time by the coaches right now for North Carolina Thomas is in the end zone to kick this will be his first punt of the second half. Jay Boaz has handled all the punts since Thomas injured a hip. The way he's standing doesn't look, Jack, like he's going to kick that football. Well, he has to look and see where the pressure is coming. The thing you want to do is make sure you catch this punt. They're going to put one more second back on the clock because I, it'll be 15 seconds, not 14. But again, you have... Mike Thomas run around, either go out the back end or take a knee eventually, but you don't do it too quickly. You want to get the time under 10 seconds to do the free kick if you are indeed going to take the safety. Kicking into the wind, I, I wouldn't run the risk of trying to punt it away because you're going to be close to field goal range. But the longer you hold on to the football the, and in the end zone, the more of a chance you run the risk that you might drop the football and then you instantly give Duke the football game. So it's 14 seconds is a long time, but you, I don't know if I'm Mike Thomas, I take it and I run out the back and say, all right, fellas, I'm going to kick to you with, four, with about 13 seconds left. No, you catch the ball, put two hands on it, uh -huh. and keep your head up. Now, let's see what happens. Duke is going to send 10. Thomas, send a punt. But you got to catch the snap. Important snap of this ball game for North Carolina. Thomas gets it, and he is going to do just that. Step out of the end zone for a safety with 12 seconds left. So that puts two more points in the Duke column, 41-40, and a free kick coming from North Carolina's 20-yard line as Duke will get the football back. Now you have an option of punting the free kick or or kicking it off the tee with Thomas not a hundred percent with the hip problem he's not the likely punting guy kicking off into the wind you can get the ball in the air but you're not going to get it all that deep and one more element depending on how far this ball is kicked you can call for a fair catch on a free kick and kick from that spot a field goal a field a long distance field goal but you can kick it without having the defense line up against you now mike thomas is out there as if he's going to punt the football see him warming up on the sidelines and now back on the football field so apparently they're going to let mike thomas kick there is a breeze it is growing diagonally across his face so he'll be kicking essentially into it. With that breeze, you have the possibility with 12 seconds remaining of being able to run a play before thinking about trying to kick a, a winning field goal for Tom Cochran. And what irony that would be after Cochran missed a long range field goal last week to try and pull out a Duke victory. If a field goal is what they will lean on, Duke must get the football in the vicinity of the 35-yard line of North Carolina. The 30 would be preferable. That would be a 47-yard kick. 
Well, he tried a 51-yarder at Carter Finley last week and had plenty of distance. He just pulled it left. All right, Mike Thomas to kick it. It's amazing what kind of a fuss we make over that piece of leather. <laughs> 12 seconds to go, 41-40, North Carolina leading Duke. Well, this will go down as, there have been so many benchmark games in this <laughs> Fox rivalry's history. Now this will be way up near the top. Here's Thomas's kick. Dice at the 40. He's down at the 43-yard line. That stops the clock with eight seconds left. Kevin Addis on the tackle. Good punt under those circumstances by Mike Thomas as well. Got a lot of distance and got a lot of height. We're at the 42-yard line. They're 58 yards away from a score. Now the clock would stop on a first down, so they don't necessarily have to throw the Hail Mary ball here, although they are in that formation to the right of Spence Fisher. They need to get 20 yards to get into range, and they need to do it in under eight seconds. Fisher throws. It is complete. Thomas gets out of bounds at the 41 with two seconds left. Cochran enters the field. He'll have a wind at his back to try a 58-yard field goal. His longest is 47. 44, rather. But as Jack said last week against North Carolina State, he hit a 51-yarder that was long enough. He's going to go back to the 50 to get a little extra space, so it'll be a 60-yard attempt. Capados to hold. There's the kick. It is up. It's going to be wide and short. The ball game is over. North Carolina holds on for the win. They won a dramatic finishes in this long series 41 40 North Carolina on top the Tar Heels now can set their sights on a possible entry into the Peach Bowl depending on what happens in the next couple of weeks but what this victory does for North Carolina is keeps it wide open for the rest of the conference to move up Brett McMillan has Mac Brown on the field. Boy, Coach, what a thriller. Well, it's a great way to end the season. We've had a lot of injuries. We've had some frustrations, but the Duke Carolina game is a, a first-class game. Their guys played really hard and played good. Our guys played hard and played good, and it usually comes down to the last second here, and it's a tribute to college football. Most of these guys graduate, and uh, they played really hard today, and it was a lot of fun. It's a tribute to your team, the way they took over in the second half and really controlled the line. Well, we've had some trouble with our consistency some throughout the year in games like this. Some people have said, boy, they're just not tough enough to win the big game, and I couldn't be prouder of them today. Coach, congratulations. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Brett. North Carolina holds on for the win. A thrilling finish here in Durham, 41-40. We'll be back after these messages from your local ACC station.